Much a high, man, to the tribe, man. Come on, man. We did it again. We're back. We said we wouldn't be back. We said we wouldn't be here, but we back, man. We back, man. Drop Nation, what it do, man? Much a high to Miss D and the Copper Color waking and checking in in the chat room. Much of uh, to Aqua Tide Battle checking in in the chat room. What's good, Battle Family? Much of uh, to uh, Chef Candy checking in. And she already gave me my tea. She already gave me my tea. She went to the living water, hooked it all the way up. Much of how, uh, man. Aki, 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 Armani, Galli back in the chat drop chat look like it's ready to go man Woo, keep it going man keep it going bring it on down before i lose my cool before i lose my smooth feels great to be back another day 432 to drop radio drop back at you it's so great to, uh, you know what I'm saying? What, whoa, 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 whoa. Isaac Ford checking in. Much of hive, Aki, Isaac in the chat room. What it do? Turn up. See how we do that? Mid sentence. Turn up. We just, we, we just surfing the wave. Don't mind us. Go ahead and get comfortable, man. And much of hive to everybody checking in. Across the plane. Yeah, you know I mean, it's dope to see our listener count rising and rising, and just knowing that the vibration is spreading, man, all across the plane. We're doing it in real time. Shabbata. Tribing up, man. Getting that drop, you know what I'm saying? One by one, we're disconnecting somebody from their uh, normal activities uh, for this little interruption. You came here for an interruption. Why do we need an interruption, man? Because we got to get out the mind of a hijack. If we don't get interrupted, we'll fall back to sleep, back into the mind of a hijack. Sometimes we got to lose sleep. And I got family on the East Coast literally losing sleep. And I, I don't I don't condone, you know, uh, uh, get get your sleep, my family. But if you're finding a way, if you're finding a way, much of how, because you're finding a way, you know. We're all finding a way. And uh, I gotta, I gotta send out an apology, uh, uh, Shilaki, Shilaki family. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I simply forgot to press archive uh, last show, so uh, it was a good show. I mean, you kind of had to be there <laughs> because we don't have any recordation of it whatsoever. So uh, it only existed in our minds. That's pretty much what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so I know y'all probably checked in at, at probably you know twelve. Or, or six, you know, no, the normal relay hours, and I apologize. Um, I did not, uh, you know, it had nothing to do with the soca. It was, it was a nice, um, a nice mix. You know what I'm saying? It had nothing to do with Chef Candy and that soca. It had everything to do with me not pressing uh, uh, start I archive on my controls up here. So let me check, make sure we archive, and make make sure we are recording. You know what I mean? Because I don't want to go through this. Heartbreak again. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We archiving. We good. We good. We all right. We good, man. We good, man. Yeah. My busy. My busy. What do you want from me? What do you want? What do you want from me, man? <laughs> I'm going to make mistakes. <laughs> I make mistakes on a daily basis. Get used to it, people. All right. So uh, much of how we are archiving. So I'm getting, I'm getting used to these little, you know what I mean? You know, I don't do all the tech stuff like that. I'm doing it because I got to do it because when I, every time I try to go to, you know, one of my tech savvy people, you know, what I mean, they'll be like, what are you talking about, man? You trying to do 
We, you trying to do a website with a radio thing with the, with the, with, you, you want to put the chat and you need an app. You want to put stuff in 432. I don't know what you want. What, do you, what is it? Is it a, is it a media company? Is it, is it a radio station? Is it a blog? I'm like, I don't, I mean, all right, just put this here. This, no one really got it. You know what I'm saying? Or they would be like, all right, man, I see the vision, man, but just uh, give me 50%. Give me 50%. I'll make it dope. I'm like, damn, man, that don't make sense. That don't make sense. So it's taken years to get to this point that we can, you know, be in our golden seat right here. You know what I mean? Talking about dracons, talking about energy and doing it in real time. All praise to Wa for all of our patience and perseverance to make this vision. It's, it's not even complete yet. It's just getting started, man. Once you see, once you see, once you see, once you see clearly, I don't know if you, uh, I don't know if you, uh, if you, uh, you know, dug on that last track, you know what I'm saying? That was dedicated to my bro, uh, Armani, uh, Gai, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the bro hit me with an early request. I think I'm going to start doing that whenever I can, uh, you know what I'm saying, get in the chat room like half an hour early. If y'all got a request, don't hit me with like 10 songs. But if you got like one song, you know, one or two, you know what I mean, then I can like try to do that before the show start, you know what I mean, and we can try to get that popping so we can get, you know, a few requests. It's not, you know, I'll do my best. You know, you know how it is when you open it up, it might, it might go crazy, it might, it might spiral I might have like a hundred songs next time I look over here, man. So I'm just saying, I'm hooking y'all up, man, because you know what I'm saying I want y'all to, I want y'all to vibrate. I want you to, I want you to hear what you hear. I want you to actually think about it. And be like, man, what, what song do I want today? You know what I mean? So, you know, we can manage it now. We can do it. You know what I mean? Next time y'all come in, just you know, drop me a little song in here so I know what's up. I'll check in like half an hour early, man, and try to get those going, man. But I gotta play that back though. I gotta play that Peter Tosh back. Rest in power. Rest in power to the Marlies. You know what I mean? I mean, people been taking L's for telling the truth. You know what I'm saying? Having children, especially, you like, is it worth it? Is it worth telling the truth? And every time you had that feeling, the the truth hits you. And the fact is, is it worth not telling the truth? You know what I'm saying? Is it worth not? Is, is it worth being? just a happy ass slave right now you know what i'm saying is it worth going back to sleep and teaching your kids all right you know christmas go crazy halloween go crazy eat your candy you know what i'm saying is is that worth it going back to sleep you know what i'm saying is it worth it for them to try to wake back up you know what i'm saying or try to wake up on their own you know what i mean is it is it your your life gotta be worth something you know what I'm saying? Your stretch here has to be worth something. You got to leave a mark, man. I don't care if it's long or short, man. Whatever your design is, we got to leave a mark. And most I really put it in us, man. You know, right here, especially my fam in the chat, man. I know we all here to leave a mark. And uh, we know that we are the mark, the sign, the cross. Fire, water, ether. And our mama, he was just talking that. We're just talking that high, that breath, man, that, that you know, connects us all, man. Let's get back in this Peter Tosh. I want y'all to calm down. I'm going to come back, man, with a clip from Waka Flocka. If y'all ain't heard it yet, I actually went ahead and, you know, just made it into a little sound bit. So we're going to actually be playing it quite often. We're going to keep playing it, and we're going to keep playing it until we get it through the thick skulls. Through the thick skulls, matter of fact. Hold on, man. I think it's play play. Where's my walker? I need to walk a flock a flock a flock a walk a walk a walk a bang 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 walk a walk a walk a bang 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 walk a flock a walk a flock a flock a flock a flock a flock a Sorry man. man, I don't know if y'all heard the music man, but it's pretty much walk a walk a flock a flock a. I ain't heard his new new though. He probably got some new new on some like, you know what I'm saying? Talib Kweli or something, man. Keep it going, man, for, for Waka Flocka, man. I, I didn't see that coming. Flocka, 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 Flocka. Waka, Waka, Waka. Dang, Flocka. Oh, 
I mean, what y'all think about that, man? What y'all think about that in the chat, man? What y'all think about that in the chat, man? What? Man. <laughs> Ms. D said, let them noggers know. <laughs> man, I'm trying to say, man. Chef Candy said, preach it, man. Preach it, Walker Flocker. That's what I'm saying, man. And again, this ain't no conscious rapper. You know what I mean? This is a known, you know what I'm saying, street goomba who lives his life that way. You know, been shot before. Probably shot one or two or three or four, you know. Um, you know, but he's like, this is what happens, man, when that energy that goes towards that street shit starts getting, you know what I'm saying, focused. Starts focusing. All that energy, you already see that cat's ready to, you know what I'm saying, you know, pick up a bazooka for this shit, man, for this tribal shit. The tribal shit, man. That's, that's, that's. I don't care what you call this gang or that gang or this gang. It's all tribes, tribes, tribes. But they're just misled because no one ain't got no big homies. Truly, you know what I mean, that have unpeeled those layers. You know what I mean? They're just on on that same rotation. You know what I mean? And it's it's not they fault. You're just talking about the result. You're just looking at the result of the tribes. They're still tribal. This is the result. It's not they fault. You know what I'm saying? Right now, it's not. It's not about blaming shit. It's about, look, man, let us let me pull your coat right quick. So, you know what I'm saying? When Walker was doing that, when Flock is doing that, he's just pulling the coat. He's still giving love to the homies and all that. He ain't trying to take nothing away from him, trying to be too big with it. He's just saying, look, man, just don't call me black. And what boats you talking about? You know what I'm saying? He might not got all the drop, might not be surfing all the wave. But, damn it, that's a huge step. Because, see, once it's the indigenous truth and once you know that they found you here, then you start looking for the trails. Then you get hot on the trails of your priest king here. Then you get hot on the trails of this whole Genghis Khan situation. And I wish we archived that show. If you got that show last night, man, we went in on this Mongol situation. We got into uh, the medieval history of the uh, Israelites, uh, Miss D and the Copper Color Awakening and drop a wonderful book. I uh, appreciate your email. I appreciate your email. I don't always have time to respond, but I will definitely at least get those links and drop it on the site, man, because a lot of times I might have like 10 minutes to so sit down. Like, okay, cool. Here's some links. Let me put as many of them on the site as I can when I can. So I appreciate y'all for, for the patience and the energy to keep Drop Nation informed with these great links, these books, and I got them. And we're going to get through at least a couple of them today. And again, this is an everyday thing, so we don't have to try to cover everything in one night. You know what I'm saying? It's a matter of knowing that, we, you know, we can calm down. We can flow somewhere. We can enjoy some music, put our, you know, favorite music, our own, you know, playlist together. Pretty soon we'll have pretty much our own, you know, playlist full of, you know, because I don't know every song in the world. I don't, I don't know what you like. You know what I'm saying? I just know what I like, you know? And Isaac know what he like, but he's getting... Some great requests as well, man. And again, hit up Isaac. Isaac at 432thedrop.com. The bro is real time. And really, remember when the bro uh, put up that Kendrick for us, man, and then and then it got banned. It's the only album. I mean, Isaac would tell you, man, it's the only album out of dozens of albums the bro tuned up that got banned from the Podsnack application that we use. Uh, so it was like, damn, I mean, damn, literally the <laughs> the album's called Damn, and uh, that shit got taken down, man. So I said, Isaac, all right, th this time we could put it up, but we just won't, like, last time it was like, yo, go check out Kendrick Lamar album, 432, that was kind of crazy. So now we know, you know what I'm saying, we got to be on the slender, we got to be on the, we got to be on the sly slenders. But we did put it back up, though, we did get it back up, Isaac Ford tuned us back. Because Kendrick was dropping some severe drop. That's why they was taking this down. You know what I mean? Heavyweight stuff, man. And, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know the full the fullness. You know what I'm saying? We are going to kind of have a little uh, Kendrick Lamar listening party tonight, man. We're going to kind of turn up to that. Hope you enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> Hope you enjoy Isaac did some great work. I just want to flow with it because, as you know, like each song is named, you know, either love, fear, you know, DNA, blood, like, you know, it was just pretty much one word straight straight to the cuff. So I appreciate the way he was kind of hitting the gut bone with that very creatively. And we're going to, you know, back that up 
Um, we'll play that Waka Flocka clip again before we get out of here, you know what I'm saying? And that we'll be playing on the regular rotation, you know what I'm saying, 24-7 on the drop radio, man. Please believe that, man. So, I'm just feeling good, man. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying being tribal with y'all. I'm enjoying this frequency. And, yeah, you know, when you start telling the truth, you become wanted. But who wants you more? These haters, these hijacks, do they want you more than Hawa? Yo, man, let's keep it going for Hawa. 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 Do they want you more than Hawa, man? Do they want you more than Hawa, man? So if you want it, you better know, man. You only want it by one. Let's go. Three, two, the drop radio. Let go. Much of hop to the chat room going crazy. So far, so good. So far, so good, my people. I know y'all been, uh, that was a cool little, hey, look, man. This is y'all request. Y'all doing this. I act like I'm doing something, doing something crazy here, man. This is y'all request. You know what I'm saying? Y'all dropping it. It's inspiring me to get busy, to get active. Waka Flock is getting active. He's getting busy. Let's get to these comments. All my people leaving comments, getting busy in real time. Much of hive. You've been leaving comments, you know what I'm saying, on, on Twitter, on Instagram, man. You've been on YouTube leaving comments. You've been emailing me, music at 432thedrop.com, leaving comments, man. Um, you know, that's the best part of my day, man. It's just really seeing what the flow is, what the wave is, staying hijack free, and how many folks, um, you know what I mean, is, is willing to be hijack free. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're at a point, man, with Trump being president and, and everything looking crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got volcanoes and tornadoes and all kinds of stuff. And you need to anchor in something. You just don't want to anchor in the wrong thing. And a lot of it is fear. You know what I mean? I'm going to play this joint, man. Again, man, we're going to do a, a Kendrick Lamar listening party tonight, man. Much a hive to Isaac for tuning us up, man. I'm real excited about this, if you can't tell. I'm just, you know, I'm just excited, man. I'm just excited, you know, that we can have a conversation that's a little bit rare. You know, might be rare in some circles. You know, the stuff we talk about might turn people's head in the so-called real world. But, you know, we know that that's the matrix, right? So when we come together, we could talk dragons. We could talk, you know what I'm saying, uh, Mazaka and, and, and Mongols being Russians and different things. Last night, we broke it down so beautifully, man. We went through... All kind of different, you know what I'm saying, books and things. And, you know, the, the one that we was in, the medieval histories of the Israelite Empire, you know, was literally, you know, using that Anatoly for the Manko, that chronology, breaking it all the way down, man, that which what what, <laughs> what they consider Russians or Russians were the actual Mongols. Mongols didn't, the Mongols didn't invade Russia. The Mongols were the Russians and the Mongols were the Rus or the Ross, you know what I'm saying? The Mongols were the Negro, the copper color Negro. See, you had your tribe set up wherever your energy lines are, wherever your dragon lines are. It's not just America. You got to run the whole pie. Don't be so short-sighted. There's drop all over the place, especially when, it, when you're dealing with vortexes, energy, frequency, vibrations, dragons, and dragon bodies. You need to hold down the grid. So some folks is over there holding it down. In Russia, Turkey, Mazaka, you know what I'm saying, all the way down to China, different areas, you know what I'm saying, through India over there, but, you know, all throughout the further Indias over here, man, and it was great to drop on that. I'm sorry we don't got that archive, but we do got this one, so we can still touch on these things, and sometimes it's, it's good just to be there, you know, it might not be for everybody. You might really got to be surfing the wave over here, surfing the wave, and that's what y'all doing. So let's get to these comments. I just want to get to some YouTube comments here, man. Peace to the fam. Uh, Z or Zai Money. Zai Money says, uh, <clears throat> All national parks are breeding grounds. You know what he's talking about. You know what he's digging on. He's digging on some dragon drops. So he's saying, all the national parks are breeding grounds. The fires in Cali 
always start at the park. So look, man, I'm, I'm looking at these guys, man, trying to get some independent research on these fires. And you know what they're saying? They're like, look, man, these fires started started from nowhere, boss. <laughs> boss, they started from nowhere. The plane, boss. <laughs> It must have been the plane, boss. Boss, I didn't see it. It's just a, it's just a fire NATO, boss. You know, so no one knows where these fires are coming from. Now, you know they can easily be just scorching fires and just doing this just to propagate whatever fear, whatever situation. Uh, but there's no confirmation of where and how, because you know there's the elements for wildfires. You know, it's just not even at that particular, you know, peak, you know what I mean, to, it's, it's just literally coming out of nowhere, against all odds, there's just major fire, whether or not your dragons are doing that, I just want you to use that as an example of what a couple dragons can do, so when I say, what if every naga has a dragon, I need you to comprehend what that means, because when you look, and we're about to dig on some dry, um, that's really inspired by Aqua Larissa, man. Larissa, I hope you're listening in, my sister. Uh, who who dropped an uh, email a while back. And like I said, I you know, be patient with me. Sometimes I'll get it later, you know what I mean? I'll come back to it or whatever the case is. If I miss it, uh, definitely remind me, you know, if, if it's something that, you know what I'm saying, you really want to, you know, drop, make sure it's on the site. At least on the site, we got our own um published you know situation we don't have to just say okay we got to publish stuff through youtube over here you can publish your research you know what i mean it's like it, it, you know that's what the whole drop links is you know it's your recon so if you're doing you know digging on recon you want to drop some links we call them drop links you got your category so it's your published research you know you know what i'm saying there's a link to it no matter where you are across the plane you can link to it on 432 to Jobs as long as you got the internet, as long as it's, they didn't jam us up. You know what I'm saying? You can get your links, you can get your videos, man. So we're growing, man. We're over here working, man, in real time, and it feels good. Yeah, man. All right. So millions of dragons, millions of knockers. What, what, is that, what does that look like? It probably looks like hell to these people. It probably looks like the worst case scenario to these folks. You know what I'm saying? But the truth sounds stranger than fiction so when the bro z money is saying look man i think all national parks are breeding grounds think about that how many national parks how many federal reserves we're not saying they're breeding our dragons we're just saying like they cut off certain areas and some are protected you like you wonder like how come over a million Acres, you look this up. I want you to fact check this. I want to make sure I'm telling, you know what I'm saying, the absolute truth with the most accuracy to hit the target, to hit the bullseye, you know. Over a million acres of the Grand Canyon has not even been excavated or touched in any close range. I mean, they're talking about going to another planet. <laughs> They ain't even touched, they haven't even touched a million of your acres. Now, why would that be so hands off? First, you just like, well, maybe, you know what I'm saying, whoever their 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 master is is letting them know that's hands off. That's a hands off territory. Maybe they're they are excavating and they ain't just ain't saying shit. Or maybe there's dragons. I don't know. Maybe they're just like, you know what? This area here, we ain't even gonna go close to. And it's a million acres. I'm just talking about the four corners. All right, so keep that in mind. Let's go to, go on the site, man. Go on the site. Go on the homepage. I dropped it uh, earlier today. It's in the, uh, it's called Photo Drop Acadia National Dragon Reserve. Federal Parks are Dragon Breeding Grounds. Dropped by Aqua Larissa. Freeman, Aqua, Florissa, what it do? Man, a high up to the whole tribe, man. I'm talking higher, man. Who know? Getting to the root. Natural by law. Teach me to be priestly, Peru. You already know. AD, what it do? You know what I mean? We're just talking tribal, man. 
Your Honiton Hebrew Prince, what it do, man? Good family, go that, you know, dig on your Honiton, man. Wonderful, man, wonderful, man. All the family, man. Paco, what it do, man? All right, man, all right. Enough for the mushy stuff, man. Love the Sister V, man. Aqua Finesse, what it do? Aqua Finesse. Howard Stu, J Stu, K Stu, our sister Camellia, Aqua, what it do? All right, man, enough for the mushy stuff. Enough for the mushy stuff, y'all. All right. Now, when you dig on that drop, Acadia National Dragon Reserve, federal parks are dragon breeding grounds, question mark. You know, I, I do a little quote, you know, from what the sister emailed me. <clears throat> she said, this is a pick from, for Arcadia National Park. All right, so we got this pick. From Arcadia National Park. Hold on, let me make sure this is in the chat room, man. Cause this is this is this is, you know. Maybe you've seen this before. But I just wanna wait no, wait, wait. Hold up. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Hold on, give me a second, man. Let me drop this drop in the chat room. If you ain't in the chat room, go. Go to the top left of the home page, click chat, the password, still, one, two, three, four. <laughs> and you'll get in there, man. Just be hijacked free because we do got some slayers in there, man. S some hijacked slayers. This is Hijack Slayer Radio. If we even think you're trying to slay our alchemical dragon <laughs> with opposites of track, man, we on your ass, man. Hijack slayers, man. Don't get dropped off in real time, man. Ain't no play play. I'm trying to tell you. No play play. All right, man. Over here playing with y'all. Oh, man. Where's this pick at? Let me find this pick, y'all. Because I want to get this in the chat room right now. What did I call it? I call it? Oh, yeah, here we go. Dragon eggs. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Bang. Y'all see that in the chat room? Y'all see that, man? I think I had another one. I had another one somewhere. Oh, this is kind of interesting, too. This is this, uh, it looks like a dragon on this coin. Let me know if this is a dragon or an eagle, man. It looks like a dragon on this coin, man. I'm going to drop one more, man. Get in the chat room, or if you ain't getting the drop, just trying to tell you. This is our little place, our little secluded alcove, man. Federal parks, yeah, all right. So this is all right. So you, if you're in the chat room, look at all the red area of that map. All right, that's the federal parks on the west coast. <laughs> you dig it, Dale? You see the discrepancy of the dragons from the west and the east. Okay, let's get back to my sister's uh, drop. Man, chat room is popping, man. Much a high, man. Much a high if you're in the chat room getting that drop. You're going to get you gonna get a high all day. I got nothing but a high for you. You're going to get this all day long. So you came here for this, man. Now, look, look, yo, 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 yo. Yo, yo. Now, it says pick for Acadia National Park. Are very interesting. Are those eggs? The last link mentions this area is a dragon preserve. Now keep that in mind because the sister dropped us a wonderful book. She says, Drop, you're going to go crazy. And I have been going crazy. It's this book called Encyclopedia of Beasts and Monsters or something like that, man. We're about to get it, though. Actually, actually, nah, nah. She dropped that. She dropped that. The one we're going to get today is actually called Dracopedia. All right. So she dropped the encyclopedia of Beast and Monsters. So when you go to the site, click on book drop in the categories, you'll get the drop of the books, even if they're not in the library yet, because I ain't got to it yet. I got like 50 books to put in there. So I'm going to do that this week. But you can still get the updated books by just clicking the book drop. You know what I mean? Sometimes you got to go the extra mile for the drop. But we still got it on the site. All right. So uh, Dracopedia 
The Great Dragons, an Artist Field Guide and Drawing Journal, written by William O'Connor. And it's going to break down all the drop. Now, I dropped this in the chat room already. You know what I mean? So it's like one of the first drops from today that's in the chat room. What I'm going to do to make it easy, I'm going to drop it again right here. I'm going to drop it again. Bang. That's how easy this is, man. You know what I mean? This is a beautiful day, man. Much a hive. Hawa, hawa for making it so easy. Sometimes it's just easy. Oh, hold up, man. Hold up, man. Shalom, shalom, shalom. KB in the chat room. Aki, what it do, KB? I believe that's my bro, Keith, man. Let me know, you know, if I'm shouting, you know. But either way, what it do, KB? I think that's my bro, Keith, man. Let me know, man, that I ain't, I ain't going crazy. <laughs> yeah, man. Yo, man, we got it popping, man. So, got the drop. Pull that on up. Man, much of hive to this... <sighs> Sister Larissa, I'm trying to tell you, man. Sister Larissa, I'm trying to tell you. Body bags and uppercuts. Body bag and uppercuts. Let's go. Let's go back to what the sister is saying. She says, this is a pick for the Arcadia National Park. Very interesting. Are those dragon eggs? I you think there's spherical rocks all over the place. All right. Either you surf the wave that these are spherical rocks all over the place. That's your prerogative. Can't nobody take that away from you. You know what I'm saying? I ain't here to snatch away your ball. I, I'm going to surf the wave that these things are ready to hatch. You know what I mean? This is just a sign of the time. Right? You got all kinds of signs of the time. You got the waters receding. You got, you know, volcanic, you know, activities and Earthquakes, all kind of things, fires, all kind of signs of the time. Dragon eggs might be one of them, too. Remember how we got it in Baruch last night? <laughs> just in case you think we just offer a gourd around here, just talking on that play play. You know what I'm saying? You dig on it again, man. Second Baruch. Go to second Baruch. Second Baruch. And in case you missed it last night, and I wish we archived it, it wasn't my fault, Soka. It wasn't my fault, Soka. <laughs> I got some more Soka for y'all too, man. Oh, okay, yeah. My, my sister Ty said it's not Keith. It's uh, it's Karen. Karen battle. Oh, um, you know, peace, peace and power, peace and power. Aqua, Aqua, Aqua. Karen, KB. What it do, what it do, what it do. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for surfing the wave. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and uh, get cozy. Go ahead and get cozy. Get cozy. All right, man. Let me drop this drop. Stop, you know, enough of the mushy stuff, y'all. You know? All right, so you got the drop. So, you know, again, I'm just going to get it right quick. And Baruch, just in case people over here think we crazy. You know what I mean? I don't appreciate it, but I get it. I get it. I get it. If I just came, you know. From around the corner, someone start talking about dragon eggs on the beach. I'll be like, "Yeah, man, you've been smoking that dragon egg. That's that new. Uh, that's that new strain. Is that? Is this? Is this sativa, my brother? Sativa called dragon egg, my brother. Hey, man, you might have been eating that dragon fruit. You might have been eating that dragon fruit. What's up with that dragon fruit, man? Y'all, y'all uh, hear anything? You know, I mean, I, I know it's supposed to be good. I know it's supposed to be good for you. You know what I mean?" You think it's related to dragon, you know? Why is it called dragon fruit? Is it like some type of mythical thing? We got to start digging on some stuff like that, man, because we do need to get the health drop from time to time. Now, go down Second Baruch, Chapter 73. We got it last night. You've been surfing the wave. Again, repetition breaks the spell. Repetition breaks the spell. Second Baruch. Chapter 73. And it shall come to pass when he has brought low everything that is in the world and he has sat down in peace. So we're talking about Shalom. We're talking about Shalom. We're talking about 
a peace that devours chaos. When chaos has been devoured, then you can sit down in peace. And he sat down in peace for the age on the throne of his kingdom. That joy shall be, shall then be revealed. Joy shall then be revealed. So you don't even know what joy is right now. My Naga, you've been fighting the whole time. You don't know what peace is. You don't know what joy is. You don't know what I'm talking about. Don't act like you do, like you just, re okay, yeah, joy. I had a joyful day the other day. All right, man, I'm not saying you can't have the frequency of joy, but you don't know what the fullness of joy is until you reach a certain point that it's given to you again. And he sat down in peace for the age on the throne of his kingdom that joy shall be revealed. And rest shall appear. You don't know what rest is. You don't know what joy is. You don't know what peace is. Stop playing. No play play. We try. We try. We are resilient. We get it in spurts and sparks. I mean, we got some right now, right? We got some joy popping off right now. I mean, I feel good. Do you feel good? I feel good. But look what we had to do to get here, man. Look what we had to do to get this, man. So we earned this joy. And Most High has given us, you know what I'm saying, especially us, he's given us, you know, a, a good revelation of it. Now rest shall appear. And then healing shall descend in dew. Dew, man. You know what dew is. Morning dew. You know, like droplets, right? Like little drops, you know. It's the drop. We're just talking the drop. And then healing shall descend. So we're talking about drops of healing, all right? Literally falling down, a, a healing dew. You could put it in context. You could put it in reference with the living water. You could put it in context with the fountain of youth when you surf in the wave of this priest king and your living water. And the priest king that bathed in this water over and over again, probably a, 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 dozen, and a dozen or two times by now. So we're talking about living water. We're talking about dew. We're talking about the drop. Heavenly dew shall descend, all right? And disease shall withdraw and anxiety and anguish and lamentation pass from among men and gladness proceed through the whole earth. We're talking about a beautiful paradise. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is, this is everything we want. So the Most High here in 2 Baruch chapter 73 is painting a picture, giving us a foundation of everything we want. Peace, joy, rest, healing, disease shall withdraw, we're hijacked free. Anxiety and anguish and lamentation shall pass and gladness proceed through the whole earth. And no one shall again die untimely, nor shall any adversity suddenly befall. Any judgments and abusive talk and contentions and revenges and blood and passions and envy and hatred and whatsoever things are like these shall go into condemnation when they are removed. For it is these very things which have filled this world with evil. And on account of these, the life of man has been greatly troubled. And get it right here. Listen up. Listen up. This is Naga time. Listen up. And wild beasts shall come from the forest and minister unto men. What wild beasts? Are they really wild beasts? You know, we got to get out the mind of a hijack. If they're ministering unto men in the paradise time. If in paradise. These so-called wild beasts are coming out of the forest, out of their hiding places to minister, to give a message from Hawa, Hawa, 
are they wild beasts? Or are we talking, you know, saying some le level of an angelic presence, man? Remember, when they talk angels and they try to paint angels with wings, those angels are really your guardian dragons. And it seems like they took these guardian dragon and turned it into a white man with the same dragon wings. And then you're like, some people just flying around with wings? That never quite made sense, right? So either you believe that people are flying around with wings, you know what I'm saying? Or you believe in a dragon. <laughs> because you believed in a dinosaur the whole time, just put, a, put wings on it. Remember we got the Draco Rex. The Draco Rex is an actual genus or species of dinosaur called Draco Rex. And when you look into uh, this document we just dropped in the chat room, the di Dinopedia, you know what I'm saying, or the uh, Dragonpedia, <laughs> you actually have a Draco Rex. You can look at it. It's right in the beginning, the Arcadia, Arcadian Dragon. It's a Draco Rexes. So you're telling me there's an actual dragon called a Draco Rexus in this hard-to-find dragon book that Sister Larissa pulled up. And there's also an actual dinosaur species called Draco Rex. So what's the difference between these dinosaur fossil bones of this Draco Rex and this actual Draco Rexus dragon? It's a cover-up. The truth sounds stranger than fiction. We're over here to ask the hard questions, the stuff that's hard to kind of cut, you know, wrap your noodle around. That's what we do over here, you know what I'm saying? Because we're not fearful of, un of what we uncover. We know, we know our creator exists. So a after that, it's just like, what? how does it all come together then? We know our creator exists. We know our breath is secure. So how does it all come together at this point? So again, the sister, our Aqua Larissa is saying, here's this pic of the Arcadia or Acadia National Park. Very interesting. Are these, are those eggs, dragon eggs? Oh, wait, let me finish this verse right quick so it all ties together. Go back to Baruch, 2 Baruch 73, verse 6. And wild bees shall come from the forest, from the forest, and minister unto men, all right? And asps and dragons, when we look up asps, you're just getting, you know, serpent, whatever. So, you know, you can say those are the same thing. Asps and dragons shall come forth from their holes to submit themselves to a little child. And it's very important to focus on this little child because, you know, clearly how at least this transla translation is flowing out the Most High definitely wants you to take away all fear. So if this dragon is submitting to a little child, the clear picture is your children are safe, that they have a bond, that they have a destiny. When you talk dragons and dragon riders, who's riding these dragons? What aerial support are we talking about when we dig on those links? You know, like the system is deep, been dropping on us with the uh, dragons during the Revolutionary War, explicitly saying that the British were fighting with dragons and how did the revolutionarist or revolutionist <laughs> counter British dragons? How did these white folk in the 1700s, 1800s counter black King George's dragons unless they borrowed some other black tribes, dragons over here? Yeah, And they are black if they traded on you and gave these people their dragons all right this shit happened now we're digging on dragon eggs again wild beasts shall come from the forest and minister unto men and as and dragons and dragons and dragons shall come forth from their holes to submit themselves to a little child not to harm the child and like revelations 12 the dragon's going to harm the child this is complete flip-flop from Revelation 12. What dragon are you rocking with? The dragon that submits himself in paradise? We're only talking paradise. Remember the next line is verse 7. And women shall no longer have pain when they bear. Ain't that paradise, my sisters? Nor shall they suffer torment when they yield the fruit of the womb. Ain't that paradise? 
my sister. So when we hear dragons submitting themselves to a little child while all this is going on in paradise, it's clear that there's a flip from what this new test is bringing and what is already being found and comprehended and understand and overstood. You know what I mean? We're all just trying to get the drop. So with that drop from Baruch, dragons submit themselves to a little child. Mosai says that you need to accept this as a little child. You need to accept, you know what I'm saying, your secure breath as a child. Stop fighting it. Stop trying to put a hijack in between you and your creator, in between you and reality. You put a hijack in between you and your creator. You put a hijack in between you and reality. My sister, my aqua, the same. In this pick, the last link mentions this area is a dragon preserve. We're going to get the evidence right now. I look it up, and this is a Federal Reserve area, although no mention of dragons, but it makes me wonder if our dracons are hemmed up by right, being held captive in the reserve area somehow. Hmm. I mean, I'm sure they got a couple dragons captive, right? Hmm. Hmm. A million acres around the Grand Canyon. No one can even get close to a million, one million acres in the four corners. You can't even get close to the feds got it locked down, hemmed up. They any they they won't even excavate it. Like Psh, I'm cool, but we gonna hem all this up though. All right, so she said she looked it up. This is a Federal Reserve area. All right, all right, so. All right, then she said something about the chemtrails, you know what I'm saying, how the chemtrails might be affecting, I think she said before, how the chemtrails might be affecting the flight. Maybe the dragons can't fly with all that heavy, heavy uh, potion. That's just a potion. That's just a potion. And she got it in the chat room and says, if so, the majority of our dragons are in the West because of this map that shows most of the Federal Reserves in the West. I mean, once you once you get into New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, heavy. Nevada, heavy. California, heavy. Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming. All right, Montana, Washington, heavy Federal Reserve. Even Alaska got hella Federal Reserve. So let's look at Acadia. Acadia, so pull that link up, man. I'm looking in Dracopedia, the Great Dragons. All right. By William O'Connor. I'm going to scroll down a couple pages here. Get to the. Let's get to the introduction. And I want you to tell me. If any of this sounds like this. William O'Connor. Is messing around. At all. About these dragons. At all. And I believe this is written over 100 years ago. So let's go. To help me on my journey, I recruited the aid of my faithful apprentice. So this cat's going on a journey. He's, you know, I don't think he's hunting dragons. He might be. You know what I mean? He might be hunting dragons. He might be a slayer. Or he might just be an enthusiast that's trying to get information. And I think that's what he's trying to, you know, mainly trying to do is get a whole conclusive, you know, comprehensive situation. So... He says, to help me on my journey, I recruited the aid of a faithful apprentice, Conciel de la Cruz, whom I met while he was studying art history at the College of New York. For several years, Conciel has been a great help in my studio in New York, fluent in English, French, Italian. Conciel will be a priceless resource in my transcontinental journey. Listen up. We have packed our many supplies for the World Dragon expedition we have packed our many supplies for the world dragon expedition how come you haven't heard about this expedition my naga you see this ain't no play play this cat has a whole book letting you know where all the dragons are i am not telling no one to go just recklessly you know, going into Dragon Nest. I'm just saying, you you let me know if you feel the vibration of someone hijacking you when he's letting you know about this expedition he's going on. 
He's doing his own science. Observable. Observable and very reputable. And soon depart New York for one year. Together we set off for the dragon adventure of our lives. Are you ready for your dragon adventure? Let's go. Here's a warning. A big ass label is on the book called Warning for Dragon Enthusiast. You tell me if this is play play. I mean, you know, drop going crazy, you know what I'm saying? Or is there a, a serious warning for dragon enthusiasts? Dragons are not pets. The expeditions and adventures described in this book have been performed under the guidance of trained observers, experts, and draconologists. Draconologists. I didn't know there was such a thing as a dragonologist. Sign me up. Next time somebody asks me, man, what you do, man? I'm, like, I'm, a, I'm a dragonologist, man. What's that, man? I just dig on dragons, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's all you need to know. Is that real? Yeah, man, look it up. Draconologist, man. <laughs> the author encourages all readers to be forewar forewarned that dragons are extremely dangerous to them and unpredictable animals that should be never be approached or harassed. <laughs> Severe injury and death may be inflicted by these animals in their natural habitats. Is he play playing you? Dragons are predatory wild animals, intrusion into their nesting grounds, threatening of their young, and startling behavior are all natural catalysts for dragon attacks. They are merely acting upon their instincts. And that's the warning. That's the warning label on the book. All right, let me get, you know, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, actually, man. Let's get to this Acadia drop because I want to stay on point. You, you get it. You get it. Man, they got the Draco Rex's Acadius right there in your face. Again, look up Draco Rex. And you see it's a real dinosaur, so-called. Now, I'm on page 14. It says the Acadian Expedition. All right, man. So before leaving on our expedition to see a acadian green dragon acadian green dragon in the wild so this is a green dragon draco rex all right now this one they call phineas the dragon now phineas is supposed to be one of the dragons that are locked up somewhere right now phineas is somewhere locked up okay locked up my nog phineas phineas the dragon now listen up. Before leaving on our expedition to see the Acadian Green Dragon in the wild, Conciel and I made a stop to see the country's most famous dragon in captivity, Phineas. I can't make this shit up. I don't think he's playing, playing you. And you're about to see the evidence right in your face, bone love to Aqua Larissa. So before going on his Acadian Green Dragon in the Wild expedition, he said, man, let me stop and see the most famous dragon in captivity. Whose dragon is this? If he's in captivity and the Negro Naga is in captivity, whose dragon is this? Let me see. We put it together. Dragons in captivity. Negroes in captivity. Dragons being slayed by the hijack. Negroes being slayed by the hijack. Yeah, you have a pretty good, you know, you have a pretty good case to claim this dragon. <laughs> so they stopped to see the most famous dragon in captivity named Phineas. Look it up, man. P-H-I-N-E-U-S. And let me know if he's a famous dragon. According to this document, he's in captivity. Fort Tryon Park Zoo in Upper Manhattan is the home to Phineas. I'll say it again. Fort Tryon, T-R-Y-O-N, Park. T-R-Y-O-N, Park. T R Y O N Park Zoo. It's called Fort Tryon Park Zoo in Upper Manhattan, my people. And it is the home to this most famous dragon in captivity named Phineas. 
a 140-year-old Acadian Green Dragon that has lived in New York for over a century. Just because you never heard about it, just because no one's going to tell you about it, don't make it, you know, a myth, man. Not everything's a myth, man. The truth sounds stranger than fiction, man. A 140-year-old Acadian green dragon that has lived in New York City for a hundred, for over a century, for over a hundred years. In 1857, P.T. Barnum acquired four Acadian green dragon hatchlings. All right, so he got the eggs. P.T. Barnum, B-A-R-N-U-M. Is it play, play? I know, man. I know, man. We're asking the hard questions here, man. You telling me this is real drop? You sure that ain't no video game drop? Hey, man, sometimes they hide the drop in the game, man. You, I mean, you might have to go look at a game called Skyrim, S-K-Y-R-I-M, if you really want Dragon Drop. That goes into the dragon language and shows you the walls. All right. Phineas, 140-year-old Acadian green dragon that has lived in New York for over 100 years. In 1857, P.T. Barnum acquired four, 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 my naga, four Acadian green dragon hatchlings, which he placed in his American Museum in New York. When the museum burned down, <laughs> how'd the museum burn down? Could it be the four damn dragons you got in captivity, man? They said, man, I'm out of here, baby. When the museum burned down in 1865, two of the small dragons were killed. The remaining dragons were taken on tour with Barnum for over a decade on the P.T. Barnum Grand Traveling Museum and and menagerie all right man so museum and menagerie they were a traveling museum and they traveled with live dragons in 1888 barnum donated one of his dragons to the london zoo but it then quickly got sick and died in 1889 the last dragon was donated to the new york zoo in 1891 upon Barnum's death and named Phineas in honor of its benefactor. <laughs> so they called it Phineas. All right. Wow. I didn't expect all this drop. A beautiful Victorian dragon house was built for Phineas and he quickly became the central attraction. They built Phineas a Victorian dragon house. I'm sure you can corroborate this somewhere. By the 1960s, however, the New York Zoo, the Dragon House, and Phineas, who had been living in a small cramped concrete pit for over 70 years, were all in bad repair. In 1972, my naga, this is, you think this is play play? You think this is old news? This is happening now, man. This shit is ill, son. In 1972, the newly formed World Dragon Fund. Oh, my goodness. Can somebody please look up the World Dragon Fund? I can't make this shit up. The World Dragon Fund, set up in 1972, used Phineas as their poster dragon to raise funds for the protection of dragons. God. Second Baruch, chapter 73, verse 6. And wild beasts shall come from the forest and minister unto men, and dragons shall come forth from their caves, their holes, their hiding places. Dragons shall come forth out of everywhere, and submit themselves to little children 
or people with the energy <laughs> of a little small child. We're talking about the children of Yashura. We're talking about the children of Hawa. The children. Dragons will submit themselves to the children. I mean, look, can we retranslate this or do we got to be stuck on this translation from, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting this off of Pseudopigrapha. All right, so I, should, should I stick with their translation or can we surf the wave and say, and dragons shall come forth from their holes and submit themselves to the children of Hawa? If we're reading about 1972, the newly formed World Dragon Fund used Phineas as their poster dragon to raise funds for the protection of dragons. In 1978, a new dragon enclosure. 1978, a new dragon enclosure was built for Phineas and his health and attendance at the park dramatically improved. Today, Phineas is... The only great dragon alive in captivity in America. So this, you know, so I'm thinking this was over 100 years ago, man, because it's talking about dragons. I figured it had to be, but this is recent news. Because we're talking about today, Phineas is the only great dragon alive in captivity in America. After our visit, Conciel and I departed New York for our first destination on our journey of the world's great dragons, Bar Harbor, Maine. Now, you remember we got in the Forbidden Histories of America. Go back. Please get that drought. The Forbidden Histories of America on YouTube. Um, you know, we dug on Maine. I believe it was actually said, you know, called Maine or Manan or Mananan. Mananan is Don or Dane or Don or the tribe of Don. So in this hard to find, hard to find, hard to find document called The Forbidden Histories of America by Daniel Lowe. Go in the library. It's in there. One, two, three, four is the password. Go in the drive library. And he has this whole part where he's breaking down Maine. And he breaks Maine down to Mananan. He said Maine is originally called Mananan which was also called Dananan, or Dan. Now, when you look up certain shields of Dan, you have a dragon on Dan's shield, all right? So think about this dragon, because Dan wasn't the only one with dragons, of course, but they probably had some pretty cool dragons, all right? Dan had dragons. Dan is Mananan, or Dananan, all right? Which is your current day Maine. Maine. Dan, tribe of Dan, dragons. Remember, you know, D Dan was always connected to the serpent, but the serpent is really a dragon, all right? Dan, dragon. Dan, Dananan, Mananan, Maine, dragon. <laughs> so Maine is, in all possibility, you know what I'm saying, the area where... The tribe of Dan was rock, you know, rocking back in the day, which means that they were producing lots of dragons around Maine. Obviously, New York. I'm going to look at this map again that's uh, on the previous page. Let me finish this paragraph. Bar Harbor, Maine. This is home to the Acadian National Dragon Preserve. Now, can one of my family go Google... Acadia National Dragon Preserve and see how they changed the name. It is no longer called the Acadia National Dragon Preserve. When you Google it, you'll see it's basically just called a federal <laughs> Acadia Federal Reserve, something like that. You know what I mean? So it's changed to a federal reserve or not a reserve, but a federal park, a federal preserve. Um, a large stretch of coastal land protected for the Acadian dragon to use as its nesting ground. Wow. Let me go back to the comments, man, to the homie Z Money, man. He just left a comment three hours ago. This is what I mean by surfing the wave. He just left this comment three hours ago. He said, all the national parks are breeding grounds. 
Then he goes on, the fire in California always starts at the parks. The fires always start at the parks. The fires always start at the parks. So wherever this uh, situation was going on, even in California around, you know, what they call wine country, you know what I'm saying, Napa and all that, I mean, who knows what's over there, man. We're talking about federal preserves and land. Most of your land is being held in check. Remember, Howard Mark dropped it on us, man. 770 million acres of land is being held. 770 million acres of your land, my Naga, my Negush, are being held in a government trust right now. It's just being held in a government trust. They don't own it. They're just holding it. Holding it in the trust. For what? For when? Why is Trump going through all this legislation trying to get the lands to the federal land to be back in the state hands? If states want to control the land. The feds want to control the land. You had more power in terms of connecting to this land when the state at least had it. Because the state, you know, kind of worked with some folks. The feds is just holding this thing in the headlock. 770 million acres of your land is in a federal trust right now. We're only talking about federal preserves. This is the home for the Acadia National Dragon Preserve, a large stretch of coastal land protected for the Acadian dragon to use as its nesting grounds. So they're using this federal land, like the homie Z Money said, all the national parks are breeding grounds, nesting grounds. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So which way you want to go, boss? Which way you want to go? Man, you know what I mean? So when you think about Zion National Park, you know what I mean? And they keep you on the trail, right? They keep you on the trail, right? What happens when you go off trail, man? There's a lot of land. There's a lot of get lostness. There's a lot of dragons, man. Oh, boy. Let's go. All right. So we're talking about nesting grounds from New York City. We travel to Boston and then to Mount Desert Island, where we will spend a couple of weeks traveling with Captain Avery Winslow of the Sloop dragon or wild dragon so something's called wild dragon he's a part of he will be our guide while we study and draw the dragons in this region so this winslow you know pretty much wanted to you know what i'm saying uh um, or you know these particular explorers man you know just want to kind of get these sketches and that's what you're going to get in this link and in this book and again they called it acadia national dragon preserve you know, there's a big stamp. There's an actual official stamp of the Acadia National Dragon Preserve from April 13th. It doesn't. I'm looking for a date here. I don't know if it says 1814. I can't really read that. But man, you know, it's right in your face. Acadia National Dragon Preserve. Now, when you go back to the previous page on page 14, you actually see the whole coastline of Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York all the way up to Nova Scotia, and it says historical range, habitat of the Acadian green dragon. So the habitat of this one species of dragon is Connecticut, Massachusetts, New New Hampshire, Maine, all the way up to Nova Scotia, New York, that whole area is where this green Acadian dragon the most famous being Phineas, who right now, today, is in the, uh, was at the New York Park. Where's my homie Phineas being held, man? He's over there at Fort Tryon Park Zoo in Upper Manhattan. If you want to see what's up with Phineas, man, he's up there in Tryon Park Zoo. T-R-Y-O-N, Upper Manhattan. He was 140 years old then. I mean, he's probably down there 160 now. And he's supposed to be the last 
Oh, gee, they built him a Victorian dragon house. Man, Phineas is the only great dragon alive in captivity in America. Great dragon. That almost makes me think about that revelations again, right? Behold, the great red dragon. Hmm. Is it Phineas, man? <laughs> Which dragon, man? Because they're in captivity, man. He's, he's coming out to take out all hijacks to devour the, the child Jupiter, the child Zeus that's being born out of Virgo, being born out of the celestial hijack, the celestial mother giving birth. In the story of Revelation 12, the celestial mother's giving birth. She's being hidden by her God, her dog, her Baal, who's hiding her for a time or two, trying to protect her. This is their celestial hijack in the end times, man. It got nothing to do with above the firmament, above the barrier. You don't have to pay, you know what I'm saying, try to figure out all their moves. Let them move. That's... Revelation is for them. They wrote that for them. <laughs> you just got the trickle down theory of it. You're getting the drop right here. They got a whole nother dragon over there. You got a whole nother dragon right here in Baruch. You know what I'm saying? You got Leviathan being sacrificed and given as meat in Psalm 74. We're getting all this drop about Leviathan, which is Moby Dick. Man, peace and power too. Aquas, man. My aqua, yeah, man. Digging on this drop. Peace and power to all my bros, man, and the, man, all my family, man, is that's making this a reality that we can actually manifest and put all this together in real time. It's happening, man. So you got this link. You got this link. They call it Acadian National Dragon Preserve, man. Over here jamming up the homie Phineas. You know, what do he do to somebody, man? The last great dragon alive, man. So... This whole area now, when you look at this whole green area, this whole coastal area, now go back to the map that Sister Larissa dropped. Now we go back to that map. Where we at? Where's that map? Yeah, yeah. all right. So you got most of these big old red squares and, and, and all that happening in the west, so-called west coast, you know what I'm saying? So... That's just one dragon. Remember how many species they said of dragons it is, man. I'll get this right quick before we get back in the mix. Keep it grooving around here, man. Then we'll come back for some of that Thai battle of poetry, man. Come on, dog. That's what you came for. That's what we came for. It's almost that time, man. Almost that midnight hour, man, if you're on the... Uh, on the Cali side of things, man. It's almost that midnight hour, man. We over here just getting cozy. You over there, you been cozy on the East Coast. You probably just, you know what I'm saying, kicking it in your comfortable socks. Much a hive to you, man, for, you know, wearing those socks tonight. We appreciate that. Get those socks popping. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong. How many species of dragons, man? What do they say? I mean, these cats have... Working in the field manuals, they're telling you how to sketch dragons when you see them. They're telling you the types of places and where to go. This is crazy, man. And again, the drop is not telling a bunch of random folk just to go to random places. You know what I mean? I'm just saying that you might be in these type of predicaments anyway when it's time to get out of uh, the concrete jungles, the concrete cities. You're going to find yourself in such areas and you might need to know which area and what dragons are uh, in your area and i'll get this man we'll get back to the mix man there are over one thousand listen listen man listen up man stay with me man there are over one thousand species of dragons living on all seven continents in each of the four oceans why are you seeing all these dragon eggs at the beach? You go Google Bowling Ball Beach. It's in California. Google Bowling Ball Beach. Already you know it's going to be a bunch of big ass bowling ball looking rocks, right? But of course, is that a natural phenomenon? Spherical rocks on the beach? 
when you're seeing that these coastlines are these preserved areas are these actual nesting grounds or breeding grounds there are over 1,000 species of dragons. I just broke down the Acadian dragon, and I didn't even break that down. So really, when you dig on the dinosaurs, you're like, man, most of these so-called dinosaurs, especially when you deal with these fossils with this soft tissue, you're talking about 64 million years ago. And they got soft tissue, right? <laughs> so they're not that old. Most of these are dragons. Dragons come in many shapes and forms. They didn't call themselves dragons. You didn't call them a dragon. All right? Get out the mind of a hijack. We're talking about seeing clearly. So whatever this essence of seeing clearly was that was applied to these creatures, they came in different forms. This over 1,000 species of dragon living on all seven continents in each of the four oceans of the world and of course beyond when you go past that ice right you get into more worlds beyond the poles more species of dracons most of us have seen many of these animals in zoo zoological gardens or nature museums and some of you may even keep some small domestic species in your home what were they digging on man they had little dragons small domestic species are we living in are we talking about the twilight zone they were seeing dragons in museums normally like that was a normal thing and some of you even may have a small species domestic species of dracon in your home interesting but no animal in the world has inspired me more folk has inspired more folklore and stimulation to the human imagination than the eight species of great dragons mm. you know how he said you know man this is interesting man you know how he said now remember the uh never in the story i'm just gonna throw something out there because it seems like he's trying to get at domesticated animals being some type of species of dragon all right I don't know about which ones. He might be talking about certain dogs. I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, I'm not trying to give all dogs a bad rap. You know, like all dogs must be comfortable, you know, <laughs> must be Satan dog. There's some cool ass dogs out there, man. I ain't trying to do that to dog. I'm just saying these were some dog headed people. All right, but let's get it. So there's over a thousand species of dragons. All right. Most of us have seen many of these animals in zoological gardens and natural or nature museums. And some of you may even keep some small domestic species in your home. Which animals do people keep in their home that might be considered a species of dragon? I'll leave it at that. But no animal in the world has inspired more folklore and stimulation to the human imagination than the eight species of great dragons like Phineas, the last great dragon in america according to them the eight known species are the largest members of the draco order of all animals existing within the family draco rex draco rex again man i can't make this up you look up draco rex dinosaur you're going to see it in the children's museum. He just said the dragons are museums and you're going to find the Draco Rex in the children's museum, man. You're going to find a Dra Google children's museum Draco Rex, man. Tell me I'm play playing you. So if there's a Draco Rex in the children's museum and this cat is telling you about the eight great species of great dragons. The eight known species are the largest members of the Draco order of all animals existing within the family Draco Rex. They call it specifically Draco Rexidae. D R A C O Draco R E X Rex I D A E. They collectively make up the genus of Draco Rexes. When you look up Draco Rex in Wikipedia, it's going to say a genus, the same word, a genus of dinosaur. It's 
not going to tell you it's a genius of a dragon. They're lying and hiding. The truth sounds stranger than fiction. You live in Avatar. You live in, what's it called, Pandora, you know, whatever it was called in Avatar. Watch Avatar again. I know you've probably seen it a million times. Watch it again. And it's going to mind blast you. Watch it again. Me and Chef Candy just watched it, man. Mind blasting. Mind blasting. So they collectively make up the genus of Draco Rexus. The common biology to all the species is that they have six limbs, just like the dragonfly. That's very rare. No other animal has six limbs. Four legs and two wings are capable of aerial and terrestrial locomotion. Aerial and terrestrial possess hollow bone structure, lay eggs, eggs, and are capable of breathing fire. In short, they are the fire breathing dragon of legend, except that they are not a myth. In short, they are the fire-breathing dragons of legend, except that they are not a myth, man. You know, that's when it all starts to hit you, my naga. And that's when we got to really uh, release the fear, man. Let's get into this Kendrick Lamar fear. You know what I mean? We're just going to keep it bumping. We'll get, we're going we're gonna to get back on this drag and drop. I mean, it's, it's mind-blasting me right now that we got a homie named Phineas who's being held captive right now in Upper Manhattan, the last great dragon, man. Can we just, you know, give it up for Phineas, man? Give it up for Phineas, man. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, man. <sighs> we got to release the fear, man. Release the fear, man. Keep Man, right quick, much of a hive to the drop chat, man. The drop chat is where it's at. The drop chat is where it's at. I always knew we'd be somebody, mama. Mama. Here comes that man. I always knew we'd be somebody. We over here getting our chitter chatter on. The drop chitter chatter. Got a lot of chitter chatter. So many links in here, man. I, I just dug in it, man. It's like 30 links going on, man. If you're in the chat room, you're getting the drop, man. In real time, Drop Nation is in there digging on it. We got fam in there chilling. You know what I mean? Doing their thing. You know what I mean? Being a fly on the wall, checking it out, man. Trying to see. If we crazy or not, man. All right, man. All right, we see you. We see you trying to see us. We see you looking at us while we looking at you looking at us. Now, while we, while all that's going on, I just put up a couple links right quick, man. Um, much of how to all y'all, man. I, I don't even know, you know. I'm just going to say the drop chat. I just put up a couple links, man. Let me see. What's this? What's this, man? The History of Dragons. Okay. All right. This is from Draconica. Draconica. I believe Miss D dropped this on us, man. I, you know, I believe so. I just, I'm just pulling it up real quick. I'm just going to go to the middle of the page because pretty soon we're going to have to deal with St. George and the Dragon. St. George and the Dragon. Now, who's this St. George? Well, who's the King George? Who's the King George? Ben Franklin clearly said was a swarthy king on the throne in 1750, 1751. Who's black-ass King George, man? Over here while you getting jammed up, calling shots. Ah, yeah, you melanated family. I get it. You love everybody. Not everybody loves you. Why would everybody love you when you got great dragons? Now, not, see, there's many, there's many dragons, so it's not just about... Oh, you had a dragon. We had a dragon. You had certain dragons. You know what I'm saying? You had a certain type of dragon. Let's kind of get closer when we deal with these dragons now, you know. And we're going to dig on some more Mongol drop, man. After we dig on this time battle poetry, I just want to get this link. We're we we going to get right there, man. So like, 
St. George and the Dragon, many other stories have been told about dragons and the heroes who killed them. One story like this comes from Norway. The king left his daughter in the castle while he went away on a long trip. He left her a tiny dragon to be her guardian. Who's your guardian angel? Naga, who's your guardian angel? You always say, oh, I got a guardian angel over my shoulder bone. The king left her this dragon to be her guardian. The princess was skeptical skeptical of the tiny creatures, fearing, it, fearing that it could not protect her. However, the dragon soon grew into large into a large monster. He soon became too good of a guardian for the princess when he grew large enough to wrap his body all around the castle. Oh man, you forgot about these dragons that were three to five miles long that we dug on last night and night before. Right out of the Encyclopedia of Beasts and Monsters dropped to us by Aquaf Larissa. We just talking about how you pulled up. How'd you pull up? How did you pull up? How did you pull up on them? How did you pull up? Did you pull up on a boat? Did you pull up in a spaceship? Sometimes, maybe. You know, I can't rule that out. But you damn sure did pull up on these long-ass dragons, man. Three to five miles long, some of them were. Five miles long long that's how your tribe pulled up it ain't nothing oh you across the water it ain't nothing we gonna be there we'll pull up <laughs> we talking great dragons now it was a big deal for them to kill your dragon and why do we keep talking about dragons man because there's something called an essence a breath there's something called a cross a cross scene there's something called ether and fire and water. And there's only one creature that embodies that other than you. Other than the so-called Negro found right here in the Americas. These dragons. Fire, water, air, and land. Nothing else is all for. So are they all for you? Huh? Are they... Are they hijacks? Are they rogue hijacks fighting against? If they're hijacks, why do these hijacks need to kill them in order for them to become knights? See, you're a knight by blood, right? You're a knight based on the oath. A, a knight has an oath. You have an oath. You have a law. You have a frequency. You have a vibration. Law is vibration. So you are a knight. You're a priesthood. You're a con. A merry con. You're the con. When they take away your con, what happens? Go watch Avatar and see what they call their priest king. See what they call their chief. They call him the con. And then they say, oh, now it's going to be a new con. He's going to be the new con. They're called cons in Avatar. I just peeped this a couple of days ago. Now, the princess was skeptical about this tiny dragon. Then he, he grew big and he wrapped his body all around the castle and, and, and not let anyone enter out of it. When the king returned home, even he was not permitted inside the castle. The only thing to do was kill the dragon. So this dragon grew big. He said, man, I'm hijack free. He put this whole castle in check. <laughs> the whole castle got put in captivity as soon as the dragon went dragon. All right. So the king, this King George, decided to slay the dragon, all right? So the king offered his, it says, offered his, the marriage of the daughter to anyone who can kill the dragon. So he offered his daughter to anyone who could slay the dragon. No, ma no man in Norway was capable, but a man in Sweden finally killed the beast. Oh, I thought, I thought King George killed the dragon. Oh, man, you know, I'm cool. I'm cool on killing this big ass dragon, um, but I will give my daughter to anyone who can do it. So a man in Sweden finally killed the beast, this dragon, this great dragon. As his reward, he married the princess and they returned to Sweden together. Another story is about a young man who fought a dragon for the reward of bringing the king's daughter to 
his master for marriage. In this, Tristan is tricked by another man who wants the princess for his own wife. In the end, Tristan cut off the dragon's tongue as proof of his accomplishment and the lot and the lies of the other man were discovered. During the times of dragons in England, anyone who killed a dragon was awarded knighthood. I'll say it again. So you see the flip flop. So you see the mix and match in the milk in the box. We just milking and boxing, mixing and matching, putting things together. Don't don't mind us. Reading a little Baruch, you know what I mean? So we got this other story, this Tristan, he's tricked. Right, so during the time of the dragons in England, anyone, anybody, it didn't matter if you came from a con. It didn't matter if you came out of a priesthood. It doesn't matter if you were a descendant of priests. It doesn't matter if you're a descendant of Adam, of Jacob. It doesn't matter to them. Because during the time of dragons, which is the time of the Naga, which is the time of the Negro, which is the time of Israel. During the time of the dragons, which is before the Papal Bull, Doom Thy Verses 1452, which is during the Khan invasion of this Genghis Khan, who invaded his caretaker. He invaded the man that took him in to take his Khan. Genghis Khan went to war against your priest king, your Khan, and took his Khan. Because he wouldn't let him, priest, priest king, King David wouldn't let King David, wouldn't let Genghis Khan marry his daughter. It was serious business, but this king just gives his daughter away to anybody that can kill a dragon. You telling me Preston John went to war with Genghis Khan because he wouldn't let Genghis Khan marry any of his daughters, according to multiple stories. No one knows what really happened. No one knows if he died or not. All we know is that there are other stories that Preston John got away, and you know is is, is at large. You know what I'm saying? He, he did not. No one saw him get killed. These are stories, right? So we're talking about an immortal king who takes baths in the fountain of youth, who has dragons, great, great dragons, who who goes to war against Genghis Khan, who also has dragons. Go back and watch that Marco Polo, man. Remember uh, the family AD, AD, the truth seeker drop. A wonderful link, man, of an article, uh, on the rap.com and it was breaking down Marco Polo. We got that last time. It was beautiful. It led us into some deep waters, man. Deep waters. So other tales about dragons are more about their toes. Let me back it up, man. Before I start talking about dragon toes. <laughs> Before I start getting on the toes of these dragons, let me just get this out the way so we can get into some pure water flow with that Thai battle poetry, man. It's coming up. Let's keep it low. Keep it low. It's coming up. We're just getting prepped and ready. Thai battle got the drop. Now, during the time of dragons in England, anyone who killed a dragon was awarded knighthood. So they gave their knighthood to anybody who killed a dragon. In ancient Rome, dragons were thought to hold the mysteries of the earth. What are they protecting, Negro? Why are they your dragons, Negro? Your guardians, Negro? What are they guarding? They were always related to treasures, gold, vortexes. Who are you? Not one book has clearly told you who you are. Clearly told you who you are. You're going to have to find that shit. Hijack free. You can't read it in English. Who are you? That there are dragons protecting you, protecting your treasures, protecting your home, your land, the vortexes, and the multiverses. As my sister Miss D is about to dig on you, said, man, I'm digging on multiverses. We just talking energy, frequency, vibration, vibration. We talking octaves. 
we're talking octaves. So if you're in four three two, you're in a certain frequency, you're in a certain, you know, certain heaven, so to speak, right? So you double that octave, you're in a higher heaven. You double four three two, you're in eight sixty four. That's another octave. These octaves, you know what I'm saying, can be on top of each other. But if someone is in another octave, you can't see them. They're in another frequency. They're in a higher vibration. Where's Prester John? See, when someone has to drop on the octaves, when someone has to drop on energy, ah, man, you're just talking immortality. You're just talking a dragon king. Now, these people got their knighthood simply by slaying you. Remember, if you are bonded with these dragons, right? Remember what, what it's saying, Baruch? I mean, I make sure I'm not tripping. Sometimes I be tripping, you know, who knows? It says in verse verse 6, And the dragons shall come forth from their holes to submit themselves to a little child. Not to these hijacks, though, right? Because that's why they get their knighthood by slaying them. They submit themselves to their riders, their dragon riders. They call them dragon lords. It's a connection. It goes beyond a physical plane, your connection with this specific energy of fire, water, water ether and land some would say that this energy is you that the connection you have with this dracon the reason why it dies when you die is because it is a reflection of you but let's go during the time of dragons in, in england anyone who killed a dragon was awarded knighthood in ancient rome dragons were thought to hold the mysteries of the earth Romans looked to dragons as a source of knowledge and used them as symbols of strength for their military. They used two forms of dragons. They used two forms of dragons. They used two forms of dragons. One which was used for heroism to protect them. And the other is a fearsome dragon used as a threat. Which dragon are you getting in Revelations 12? I'll wait. Are you getting the hero or are you getting the villain? So know that they use two forms, duality, right? So do not read in the mind of a hijack in English with that particular form of a dragon and think that you know some dragon drop. Because you're going to miss it. Because these hijacks aren't slaying hijacks. These people aren't being awarded knighthood by slaying hijacks. They're being awarded knighthood by slaying you. And when they slayed you, they slayed your dragon by default. When you died, your dragon died. At least in this, in this game we're playing. So how do you, how do they rid this game of of dragons? They kill you. By killing you, they kill your dragons. They don't have to hunt dragons if they kill you. Now what stops them from killing all of you? And that's the only question you need to you know, take a step, take a breath and say, "Hawa." Only Hawa can keep the these dogs off of you. Only Hawa has let you remain or these dogs would have ravaged you. <clears throat> so there's two dragons. Now other tales. Now here we go about the dragon toes. Listen up. Dragon toes. Other tales about dragons are more about their toes. Other tales about dragons are more about their toes. Than the dragons themselves. Many. How many toes. Here's a, here, here's some trivia for the chat. Let's go. Here's some, tri here's some trivia for the drop chitty chat. The chitty chat room. Let's go man. My chat chats. How many toes. A dragon has. Is quite significant. Now. How many toes. <laughs> do y'all think. 
the great dragons or the king dragons or the knightly dragons have? How many toes? Let me check the chat. See who's going to put a number up. How many toes does the master dragon have? How many toes? We're only talking about toes. We're only talking about, you know, this little piggy went to the market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy wanted some roast beef or something like that. This little piggy didn't want none. Something like that. And that little piggy cried wee, wee, wee all the way home. Who said three? Sister D said three. I, I'm talking about the master drag. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Five toes, man. Much out to Miss D. On point. Let go. Drop to the chat, to chat, to chat, 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 to the chat, to chat, to chat, chat. Yeah, all right, Sister Ty, let's keep it going. Yeah, I mean, 10 toes total, right? 10 toes total. 10 toes down. 10 toes down. 10 toes down. You got to put all 10 toes down on the soil. If you're from the soil, you got pedigree. You got some pedigree. You better put all 10 toes down. 10 toes down. All right, simple question. How many toes? Just talking toes. Y'all didn't think you were going to come over here and talk toes tonight. Y'all thought y'all was going to talk turkey. You ain't say no jive, man. We talking toes. Now, why do the master dragons have five toes on each foot? Before I go crazy, let me, uh, you know, let me get this. Other tales about dragons are more about their toes than the dragons themselves. How many toes a dragon has is quite significant. Many different kinds of dragons are said to have three toes. The four-toed dragons are said to be the earth dragons. But the five-toed dragons are the most respected of all. Only a king, only a king, only a king or a high noble had the privilege of even wearing a picture of a five-toed dragon, man. I didn't know that before today. I didn't know that before the family dropped this link in the chat room. And there's no way we, we would have known that if we weren't digging on it on a daily basis. Right here, man. Let's go. It's more than just YouTube videos. Whenever someone can put, you know, the time together to do all that. Right now, we say, man, how can we do it? Hijack free. Easy. You know what I'm saying? I, I used to have this a whole huge, you know, type of, type of setup. I tried to set up for the radio. Now, man, I'm so streamlined, man. This is a streamline. I could take this anywhere. I made this, all praise the most, most high, we made this easy. This has become easy work. They knock us down, we rebuild it. We we learn more about building websites and, and, and putting in coding, this code and that code, and, and some beta configurations, some, 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 some algorithms. Y'all been helping me with all this stuff. I, I, I'm just trying to figure it out. Five toes, four toes, three toes. Now, the three toes are common, right? The four toes are said to be the earth dragons, and the five toed dragons are the most respected of all. Only a king or a high noble had even the privilege of wearing a picture of a five toed dragon. In ancient times, if a peasant was wearing or seen wearing the symbol of a five toed dragon, he would immediately be put to death. You get put to death by wearing the image of a five-toed dragon if you were not a king or a high noble. Where are they getting it from? They're slaying your dragon. They're dragon slayers. You're hijack slaves. So what is it with this five-toed? And is this some type of manifestation of yourself? 
How many toes do you have? I'll wait. Now, dragons seem to have come from exaggerated myths about huge snakes, lizards, and reptiles. One type of dragon is actually called the worm. Y, excuse me, W Y R M, and has a very snake like form with a dragon head. Another smaller form of dragon is called a dragonlet. These dragons are also venomous and can be deadly. <laughs> These dragons, right? So, certain things are dragons, you might not consider them dragons because they're not in the you know the dragon form you're used to, right? All right, all right. Whew, that's a lot of drop. And, uh, you, I mean, y'all dropped this on me, man. And, uh, bunch of Hob Chef candy, man. Digging on it, man. Keeping my tea nice and warm tonight. That living water. She dropped this parable of dragon puss. Dragon puss. All right, dragon puss. That's what it's saying, yeah. From Wikipedia, this this is going back to our Phineas. Remember Phineas? He's being held captive in Upper Manhattan. You tell me. You go look. You, you go tell me if you see Phineas, the the Green Acadian, uh, Draco Rex. All right, Draco Rex is now the parable of Dragon Puss. Uh, code name Sir P <laughs> is Perry's counterpart in the fictional story of Excalibur or Excalibur. They're making you a joke. We're just talking about fire-breathing dragons. It says he is Phineas. All right. So Phineas is this dragon, Phineas, and Ferberlot or Camelot, pet dragon. Mm. Unknown, or excuse me, Lancelot, right? So you got Lancelot. So it's okay. So are we getting some drop here that Sir Lancelot, his dragon was the great dragon, Phineas. Interesting, man. Unknown to his owners. Also, also, if Phineas is still living, could that mean that Lancelot is still living? Because if he was dead, Phineas would be dead. Does Lancelot have anything to do with this fountain of youth himself? Remember, Preston John said, we... My whole tribe took six baths in the fountain of youth. He said, we just know that we were born of our mother's womb 562 years ago. This is out the Prester John letter in 1165 AD. Saying he took six baths in the fountain of youth every time he turned back to the age of 32. He said, whether you were Hundreds or thousands of years old, you turn back to the age of 32. He said he took six baths, and by 1165, he was already 562 years old. Not just Priest King, but the whole tribe rocking with Priest King took six baths in the fountain of youth. Now, is it a stretch to assume that this Sir Lancelot, the foundational legend of this Israelite knight, also took baths in the fountain of youth. And if he did, would that mean Phineas would still be alive just like he's alive? Still at the age of 32. Unknown to his owners, he is a secret agent of King Monopunzo and the nemesis Malefishmer. So they're using all this based on real people and much of how Chef Candy because this is showing you how they put it in cartoons and games and all kinds of stuff, man, just to throw you off, man. So, you know, I just want to get those couple of links. I know we got a lot dropping. I wish I can cover it all, man, real talk. You know what I mean? But then this will be literally a, a six, seven, eight-hour show, man. Um, but if you're, in the li- if you're in the library, yeah, definitely if you're in the chat room, nothing but drop is coming your way at all time, man. And while we're talking about Chef Candy, we got to give her this, man. This is her favorite soca song. It's only... About four minutes long. You know, I, I ain't going to give her a whole mix like I did last night. Because then I'm not going to archive anything for the whole week. If you know what I mean. Michael Montana. One more time. Hey, man, let this smash. We'll be right back right after this joint with that tie battle poetry. Thank you for waiting. We'll have that pure water flowing. We'll get that drop. We'll let it flow. 
maybe get a couple more links that the system is D dropped on us, man. We're talking about that. We're talking about that. My May, my May, M A M A I. We got that yesterday out. This this Tartar drop, this Mongol drop. He is the military commander, the powerful commander of the Golden Horde in the 1370s. And we're surfing the wave that these are the Russians, and the Russians are the Rus or the Clan Ross, which are the descendants of the kings of Jerusalem. And this man, my, is definitely, in my, you know what I'm saying, uh, early search, definitely appears to be an exilarch, um, an Israelite, uh, you know what I'm saying, priest, king, chief, whatever you want to call him, rocking literally in the 17 or 1370s. My, my, a powerful military commander of the Golden Horde, which are also Israelites. Now, whether we're talking about Hebrews of different, you know, tribes, they're definitely Hebrews. And this particular Mamai was fighting against the hijack. It says this horde controlled the lands, which is now the southern Ukraine, southern Russia, Crimean Peninsula. And then we dig on this war, man. Um, uh, man, was it the Kalkovo or Kilakovo or something like that? You know, the whole the whole grounds of what was going on, man. With the chronology of Anatoly for the man going, man. We got it in last night. We got it in today. We still get it in, man. We still going, man. Let me drop this Michael Montana for Chef Candy go crazy, man. One more time. Can we do it? One more Call time. Call me anytime you man. want. Let's go. Let's stop the soaker right here before we go crazy. We don't want the broadcast to end abruptly. No more winding up, girl. Don't you whine on me now and let me work. <laughs> we working, we working. Ah, uh, man. Yo, homicide. Four, five, 540 in the building. 540 in the building. That's all you need to know. A.K.A. Eyes of the Dragon, man, in the building, in the chat room, man. What's up, bro? Everybody surfing away. What it do, do? What it don't do? What it don't do? Huh? That's a good question. What it don't do? Y'all hear that? I don't know what that means. Don't act like you don't know. Don't act like you don't know. Time for some tie battle poetry around here, man. Ah, ah, ah. Keep it low. Keep it low. Snap your fingers. Have some uh, R E S P E C T. It's tie battle season, man. This is something that we all look forward to. Every day I check my email. I'm like, there we go. Let go. Wow. See if Ty Battle doesn't write uh, some poetry. You might see me like write something and make, you know, try to pretend like I'm her. You know what I mean? So if it's ever any time you like, I'm like, yeah, you know, roses are a red, violets are blue, red fish, blue shit, <laughs> blue fish, give a dog a bone, party like it's 1999. All right, you know what I'm saying? If, if I ever kick anything like that, I'm just trying to forge me some tie battle poetry, but today she wrote something for us, so I ain't got to make nothing up. Let go. Tie battle. Turn up. Turn up, man. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. Keep it low. Keep it low. Keep it low. Keep it low. Let's go. Let's go. Tie battle, man. Got the drop. Tie battle. Got the drop. Let's get into some poetic flow around here, man. <sighs> Wow, wow. All right, man. You know, go on the home page. Click on Drop Poetry. Stop playing. Or just go. It's, I think it's the fifth one down, the fifth drop down. The fifth droplet down called All I Have to Be. All I Have to Be by Our Aqua Tai Battle. Let go. Keep it low, keep it low. Ain't you play play? Ain't you play play? Man, this is fine, man. We doing it. We charged up. Y'all still charged up? 
Everybody still cool in there? Everybody in the chat room charged up? Huh? Frequency up? All right, cool. Well, then keep it low. Keep it low. Feel good, but keep it low. Goodness gracious. Every time I mention the chat room, y'all just go crazy. Goodness gracious. All right, all right. Enough of the mushy stuff. Enough of the mushy stuff. Let's get that water flowing. Hawa. All I have to be by Aqua Tai Battle. Reading the Torah has opened up the past for me. If I believe in many gods, I'm committing blasphemy. Having false idols and deities is like having a rash to me. Christianity won't survive because a lie can't last in me. Bang. I felt like a worm on a line that was lost and cast at sea. Like I was the last one blind, but somehow I'm the first to see. With Hawa's word on my side, now I feel so fast and free. Struggling for wisdom and understanding is no longer a clash for me. To obey my father's laws was all that was tasked to me. To follow his commandments was the only thing asked of me. To search for the truth that was craftfully masked from me. To be a servant. To the most high is all I have to be. All I have to be by Akati Aqua Tai. Battle, man. Let go. Tai. Battle, man. Let go. Hey. Hawa. Hawa. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Keep it low. Keep it low. What y'all doing? What y'all doing? Snap your finger. Snap your finger. All right, man. Turn up, man. That was beautiful, man. Beautiful work. Hey. Short and sweet. Right to the gut bone. Our sister, our aqua tie. Every time. Never lets us down. My sister. What you're doing for us, you know what I'm saying? You've given everybody in Drive Nation something to look forward to, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We give it to them five nights a week at the very least. And that's just something, um, you know, I, I, I can't look left or right and see any comparison of that. I don't know any other poet who's, you know what I'm saying, dedicating their their poetic flow to a particular mission, a particular uh, journey, you know what I'm saying, above the barrier, the way, you know, you're doing it, my sister, hawa, hawa, all praise, hawa, for your poetic flow, time battle. All I have to be in real time, man. Come on, man. With Hawa's word on my side, now I feel so fast and free. Struggling for wisdom and understanding is no longer a class for me. To obey my father's laws was all that was asked. Tasked to me to follow his commandments was the only thing asked of me. To search for truth was a craftfully masked from me. To search for the truth that was craftfully masked from me. Is that a tongue twister? Who sent you? Top battle, who sent you? It's too good. To search for the truth that was craftfully masked for me to be a servant to the Most High is all I have to be. Aqua. <sighs> yeah, we got that pure water flowing tonight. I think we need to get in some flutes, man. I think, I think this needs to take us to... 
you know, a couple of flutes right quick before we get back in the mix, man. And uh, I'm feeling real fluty right now. You know, I think we just need to vibe out, get some flutes, come back, you know, get some more drive before we get our dismount on, man. It's been a beautiful show so far. We're about three-fourths of the way done, you know what I mean? And we're going to turn that corner, man. And um, right quick, man, again, again, the chat room got all the drop. Uh -huh. Turn up, turn up, turn up. Feel good. God dropping parables about dragon puss and we're just talking about Phineas. Phineas, man. Again, man, keep it going for Phineas, man. Phineas over there being jammed up right now, man. Hold your head, dog. Hold your head, Phineas. Sir Lancelot's dragons over there being jammed up, man. We're talking about the Templar. The Templar. We're gonna get back in the Templar. Y'all wanna go crazy? I'm just going to throw you a bone. I'm going to throw you a bone. This is what we do. Drop Nation. This is what we do on the Drop Radio. You up late? I'm going to throw you a bone. Look into Oak Island. Look into Oak Island. Look into Oak Island. Not a lot is being talked about about Oak Island, except... All these people, all these years looking for this treasure, saying that the Templars hid them some treasure in Oak Island. They call it the money pit. The money pit. But this particular system is built so sophisticated that every time they dig down in any area that's connected to this treasure, the entire thing floods. It's built connected to an entire irrigation system. And every time it tricks or it, it, it triggers this air, you know what I'm saying, this water flow, and it floods out everything they dug out, and it becomes this one big piece of mud, and you know what I mean? And they've been trying to do this for decades. And I'm telling you, looking at Oak Island, I'm just throwing you a bone, man. You know, we've been digging on this drag and drop. I just pulled something else up, man. Something just dropped on me, man. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Yeah, we're going to get back in these May Mays, man. Oh, you know what I want to drop on you right quick while I look for that? This great dragon drop being dropped. There's a document called Quest of the Dragon and the Bird Clan. And it's written by Paul K. Kai. K E K I A I. Right. I can't pronounce the last name, but I'm here on the on hunt. I'm a, I'm here on page 144, and I'm gonna drop this in the chat, and I will be dropping this in the library very soon, very soon. Bang! You got it in the chat, man. You got it in the chat. I'm also gonna drop this other drop. And this other drop, I'm going to tell you right now, dodge the hijack. They're going to try to throw a lot of, you know, Saturn, Saturn hijack in this. But we're going to get some pieces that deal with the Holy Grail. Because when I go to Preston John 29, Preston John 29, we will be talking about the Holy Grail, man. And we're going to dig on just one paragraph to let you know where we're going with this Holy Grail business. We're not we're not going Christian crusade with it. All right. Let me dig on this. Uh, hold up. Hold up. Let me give you the link. This other joint's called Dragon Society. All right. Again, they're going to try to go crazy with Saturn and their own hijack. I need you to get the babies out. That's all I need you to do. Can you do that? Or can we do it? All right, here's some drop, here's some more drop, here's some more drop. Dig on it. Well, we got the water flowing, sounding beautiful, man. This water is the water of Udall, Judah. This is a beautiful, special place. The water you're hearing right now is not some water off of YouTube, okay? This is not some water, you know, from the water faucet. This is a special place. Not just because it's in Utah, but this particular patch of water, you know what I mean, is where, you know, 
when our tribe is out there, man, and choose a village, and we over there in certain little pockets, and Jay Stu, how was Stu? Gave us the drop on this particular area. It's real top secret, man. I mean, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta really be a wave surfer to know where 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 this is here. <laughs> this water, man. Oh man, I mean, this is where you brush your teeth if you had to. This is where you filled up your uh, bottles if you had to. It was pure strength. It was water filtered through these rocks, and it was a beautiful filter we found for the water. And, man, we bathed in it. I mean, whatever you need to do, your water was right there. And I, I never felt so rejuvenated waking up out my tent, going down to this little, you know, water situation. And, yeah, one day just captured the whole conversation, man. And this is it. This nine minutes, man. This nine looping minutes is the whole conversation I personally captured. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, just feeling, uh, feeling good with this water here, man, you know. Feeling good with this water here, man. <sighs> All day. Now, this uh, link, man, I'm on page 144. It says, a few centuries after the introduction of the Kalakakra, or something called the Kalakakra, into tibet possibly by the shambhala king himself remember shambhala is shimbala surf the way all this india india tibet stuff you're in it you're in the indias right here in america don't get it twisted dodge the hijack so when you hear india for the purpose of the wave for the purpose of seeing clearly I need you to dig on it. We're talking America. When you hear Ethiopia, you're talking America. It didn't become a place over there until 19th century or something like that. All right. So we're just talking about America. This is a special place. This is Shambhala. Shambhala is Shimbala. You also have Queen Sheba, which in the Forbidden Histories of America, it says that Sheba is short for Shimbala. Sheba is short for Shambhala. So when you keep hearing about this Ethiopian Queen Sheba, one, you're in Ethiopia. Two, Sheba is short for Shambhala. She was not a Hamite. She was a daughter of Shem. She was an Israelite. She was a Shambhala. She was a Sheba. When you hear about these Saracens and Sarah's sons, Saracens, when we look on, oh, these are the Saracens. Saracens is Sarah's sons. Who's Sarah? Who's Sarah Callie? Now, Horace Butler was real slick about this Sarah Callie. He even tried to make her like the daughter of Jesus or something, right? Jesus' daughter, but who's the real, who's the real Hawashua? Who's the real Joshua? And did Joshua have a daughter? Is her name possibly Sarah Callie? Sarah the Black. All right, who's being worshipped as the Black Madonna? Sarah Callie, Sarah the Black. Okay, follow all this. And who is who are Sarah's sons? Who are Sarah's sons? Who are Sarah's sons? Okay, Sarah's sons. Let's go. So a few centuries after the introduction of Kalakakra into Tibet, possibly by the Shambhala king or Shimbala king, Prester John. Prester John, Prester John, the Shambhala king. Remember, Shambhala is also Cibola. C-I-B-O-L-A. Cibola is Shambhala. Cibola is Kalelu. Cibola means the promised land. Kalelus means the promised lands. I'm talking Kalelus, Kali. You look at the old maps where Utah all the four corners, Arizona, New Mexico did not exist. It was all called Judah or Judah. That's all the land of Judah. The whole four corners, this whole Anasazi situation. And on certain maps, Judah is connected directly to California. Utah touches California. There is no Nevada. It's all Judah. It's all Judah. And it's touching Cali. So now you have this Khalifa, right? 
Now you have this Sheba, this Khalifa. All right, surfed away. So we got this Queen Khalifa. We got this Queen Sheba. One and the same queen. She's also Kali, the black, right? Sheba, Shimbala. It's also a title. It's not just one Sheba. It's a title of these daughters, all right? Listen, man, it's deep. So California connecting to Judah, Udah. Now let's get it. So this Shambhala or Sibola king or Kalelus priest king, Prester John, sends messengers to the emperors of the Pope and Pope. So to the emperors and the Pope. All right. So he sends a message. At this time, the situation of the European Christendom was very grave. So the Christianity, you know, today was at a sad state of disregard. It was grave. It was plagued. The Christians that they say they're looking for are the Hebrews. They're calling them Christians. They're calling King David Christians. But to differentiate, they call them Nestorian Christians. Nestorian. You look up Nestor, and etymology connects you to an old king renowned for wisdom, renowned for wise counsel. An old king is an ancient king. Let's go. The expect. Oh, wow. The expanding Turks had administered a crushing defeat to the Byzantine, the Byzantine Empire and had even captured em Emperor Dio Diogenes in 1091. So who's this Diogenes? D-I-O-G-E-N-E-S, who was captured in 1091, who was then released in an act of magnanimity. From 1144, wow, from 1144 to 1186, one crusader states, one crusader state after the next fell and until, and until Jerusalem, which had been recaptured by the crusaders, fell in 1187. Jerusalem fell in 1187? Prester John's letter is 1165? They say Prester John was invaded by Genghis Khan in 1203. And now you have the Dark Ages and now you have a rewriting of history and them taking this fall of Jerusalem and pushing it back to 70 AD. Say, oh, that's Titus. That's Titus Vespasian. And I'm just asking you an honest question. And I haven't even dug on this, but I need you to dig on this. What does Titus Vespasius have in common with Americus Vespucius. You hear about this. Oh, America's named after this guy named Americus, Americus Vespucius. What does that got to do with the Vespasians and the Flaviuses and the Tituses? They change times and laws, man. What does Titus have to do with Americus? What does Vespucian have to do with Vespucius? And where are they hiding the phantoms and the duplicates? If 1187 is the fall of Jerusalem. Now, Prester John's appearance at this time may have been designed to create hope. So this last noble image of a Negro just... The thought of his appearance gave these people hope, man. The thought of you gave these people hope. Why? You got the Garden of Eden. You got the Fountain of Youth. You got these, you know, all this in, all this so-called magic that they were trying to hijack for power. Prester John's appearance at this time may have been designed to create hope since that king promised to bring relief to Christian kings by invading from the east. Oh, he promised. But did he? Did he? Did he help these hijacks? He claimed to have been Christian, but was he? And maybe he was in a syncretic way. Whoa. So he claimed to be Christian, and maybe he was in a syncretic way. Look up syncretin. Look up a cretin. Look up syncretinism. You have something being just pulled together from all different places. So 
uh, if you're pulling a lot of stuff together from a bunch of different unknown places, then maybe Preston John is a Christian. <laughs> That's what they say. So he's clearly not a damn Christian. All right, let's go down. Now, here's what I want you to focus on. I'm going to get it, get this. I'm going to read it from another link. And then, you know, we're going to vibe out. Now, Prester John appears to have created something else designed to psychologically spur the Christian warriors into action. He's playing mind games with these with these dogs. All right? In the romance literature that arose after the letters of the Eastern King, Prester John, we hear the relic known as the Holy Grail. What is the Holy Grail? So Prester John appears to have created something designed to psychologically spur the so-called Christian warriors, invaders into action. In the romance literature that arose after the letters of the Eastern King, Priest King, you're in the East. We hear of the relic known as the Holy Grail. This is in the romance literature. Whatever the Holy Grail was and the literature gives divergent views, it was located somewhere in the farthest Indias. I can't make this shit up. We've been digging on the farthest India. I've been telling you you're in the furthest India. Ronald Sanders in the Lost Tribes of Promised Land told you you're in the furthest India. Their official cover-up story with Columbus is he got lost looking for India. He found the furthest one by design. It was a takeover. It was a military assault. It was Operation Find These Nagas. Now, in the romance literature that arose after the letters of the Priest King, we hear the relic known as the Holy Grail. Whatever the Holy Grail was, we're going to dig on a, you know, uh, a theory. Whatever the Holy Grail was, it was located somewhere in the farthest Indias. So whatever the Holy Grail was, it's located in the farthest Indias. It's hidden, right? You're the hidden ones. The creator calls you his hidden ones. He hid you. He sandwiched you between two large continents, Atlantis and Lemuria, even though this is all technically Atlantis or Lemuria, whatever, you wanna, whatever your perspective is. We know that these are hijacked terminologies. We know that Atlantis is named after Atlas, which is Poseidon's son, so we're calling it after Poseidon's son, Atlas, which is the plural form, Atlantis. Poseidon is Canaan. Poseidon is Canaan. In Greek mythology, Poseidon is Canaan. But I'll let you dig on it. Holy Grail. Whatever the Holy Grail was, it's located in the farthest Indies. Now listen. If the Garden of Eden was not enough, surely the Holy Grail would lure the brave soul past Saracen armies to the mysterious east. Can't make it up. Whatever the Holy Grail is, whatever it is. If the Garden of Eden was not enough, if the Garden of Eden located in the furthest India it ain't enough. Surely the Holy Grail in the furthest India could lure the brave. So they needed something to get these people over here. They said, oh, here's this Holy Grail. If you get it, you drink of it, you'll, you'll become young. But what is really the Holy Grail? You see, in my estimation, they slaughtered the Holy Grail. 
they brought the Holy Grail abomination in their search for the Holy Grail. They were slaughtering it the whole time. They were slaying the Holy Grail the whole time. Whatever the Holy Grail was, it's located in the farthest India. If the Garden of Eden was not enough, surely the Holy Grail could lure the bravest soul past Saracen armies to the mysterious east. And I said they call you Saracens. Wow. Oh, wow. They call you Sarah's sons. Who is Sarah? We know Sarah and Abraham. We know Sarah Callie, thanks to Horace Butler. And we know that Callie is black. And when you look up Sarah the Black, you might get some drop. So the Garden of Eden is in the furthest India. The Holy Grail is in the furthest India. What else is in the furthest I India? Who else is in the furthest India? Hawa, Hawa's hidden ones. Hawa's hidden ones. Now, you remember we got a little bit out that furthest India from the uh, Lost Tribes and Promised Lands, man. And we've been digging on this for a minute in the Lost Tribes and Promised Lands. So, this lets you know that we've been digging the whole time. And it's been right here about this Holy Grail in the furthest India. And, you know, this breaks down the whole generic term of Ethiopia. You know what I'm saying? How these... How this term Ethiopia is just being thrown around. Let me just get this one part about this Ethiopia. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm on page, man. Dig on it, man. The Lost Tribes and Promised Lands, man. I'm on page 47. We can, there, we can thereby see in all its riches the tolerance implied in the vision of Prester John. Although Eldad and his fellow Dan Knights, where's Dan? Dananan, Mananan, Maine. Let's go. In their time, did not have to be black to be Ethiopian. So they did not have to be black to be Ethiopian. Let's go. An anthropologically more sophisticated 15th century tended to take for granted that a king of Ethiopia could not have been any other color than black. But at least for the length of a historical moment, the seekers, listen up, my nagas, the seekers of Prester John did not seem any more perturbed by his black than by his Jewish aspect or Hebrew aspect. Again, the seekers, remember the monument, you know what I'm saying, that, that the fam dropped on us about the monument of Preston John. How does a monument right now set up in Port Elizabeth, Fleming Square, adjacent to the city hall in South Africa, in South Africa, the memorial is dedicated to the Portuguese seafarers who searched for Prester John between 1145 and 1645. There's a monument dedicated to Prester John that was just put up when? In 1986. The monument was unveiled to the public in 1986 by the Portuguese ambassador. In 1986, by the Portuguese ambassador, to give a shout out to everybody that lost their lives looking for Prester John, your priest king, King David, between 1145 and 1645, my nigga, my naga. They're looking for your priest king for 500 years. Back. To the Lost Tries and Promised Land. Page 47. The seekers of Prester John, remember the monument said, this is dedicated to the seekers or the seafarers who searched for Prester John between 1145 and 1645. 
And it says right here on page 47, the seekers of Preston John or the seafarers did not seem any more perturbed by his blackness than by his Jewish or Hebrew aspect. So he was a so-called black Hebrew to this extent that his blackness to the extent that his blackness to the extent that his blackness was that of an Ethiopian. John's emerging coloration had a long and not always unfavorable history. It wasn't always a bad thing to be called so-called Ethiopian or so-called swarthy or dark or copper color in Europeans' eyes. It should be pointed out that, like the geographical term Ethiopia, like the geographical term quote-unquote Ethiopia, the anthropological ones Ethiopia and Ethiopian were in ancient and medieval times thoroughly ambiguous. So the term Ethiopian is thoroughly ambiguous, thoroughly vague. It does not describe a place. It describes a characteristic of a copper color people. That's it. What did Waka Flocka say? I'm tribal, man. It's not just about a country man it's about my tribe wherever we are so to the extent that his blackness was that of an ethiopian all right it should be pointed out that like the geographical term ethiopia the anthropological ones ethiop ethiop ethiopian were in ancient and medieval times thoroughly ambiguous when they referred to someone from a specific region they were close to our modern usage, even though that region, which began at the Upper Nile and had its capital at Moreau, sometimes stretched southward and eastward as far as the imagination would allow. Sometimes stretched southward and to the east as far as the imagination would allow, and that includes the Americas. But quote unquote Ethiopian served to designate color. Ethiopian served to designate color before it came to be applied to a region. The Greek Eptos. It is a Greek word. Eptos. Eptiops. From which it is derived literally meant burnt face. So it is derived from something meaning burnt face. Which is derogatory. It's coming from the Greeks refer to any person of black complexion any person of black complexion it describes a characteristic not a place get out of the mind of a hijack again we get the fine print on page 43 about the indias and the furthest india and i leave it at this man you know, i wanted to get into this other you know what i'm saying drop I mean, but I'm going to leave it at this, man. Here we go. Here we go. Now, we're talking about the term India. We're talking about the term Ethiopia. We're talking about page 43. We're talking about the fine print that we normally skip over at the bottom of the page. That's the, that's the fun stuff we like. Now, this confused geography, we just talked about Ethiopia, right? This confused geography has ancient and honorable ro roots. Ancient and honorable roots. The first verse of the book of Esther described the realm of the Persian king Azorus, whose palace was at Susa, as extending from India, listen, as extending from India even unto Ethiopia. In Greek and Roman, authors there is a similar vagueness. We're talking about amb ambiguity, this being an ambiguous term. We're talking about a similar vagueness about a vast region taken in by the terms like India, quote unquote, wow. and Ethiopia, quote unquote. So there's a similar vagueness. When you talk about India unto Ethiopia, it's a similar vagueness about a vast region. Taken in by terms like India and Ethiopia, it's a vague, vast 
region. I'm telling you, you're in the furthest India. It is a similar vagueness, a vast region. Awa. The latter, Ethiopia, even in its narrowest sense, comprises a much larger area than present-day Ethiopia. And beginning just south of the first cataract of the Nile and about its relationship with the better-known Persia, in the apocryphal Acts of St. Thomas, the apostle moves easily between Persia and India, so-called India. All that is right here, my people. We're talking South America. Come on. Starting roughly with the 15th century uh, apocryphal writer, the pseudo Abdias, who described the exploits of the apostle Thomas Bartholomew and Matthew in, in each of the three Indias, the later concept became a standard one in the Middle Ages. The later concept. These are concepts. You're in the mind of a concept. You're in the mind of of a hijack who's giving you concepts and you're taking them in two two dimensions and saying, yep, that's Ethiopia. Yep, that's India. Oh, you're from India? My naga, you're in it. You're in the furthest one. Let's get it. Because there's three Indias, did you know? There's three Indias, did you know? You could say, you could say there's three Ethiopias. It's the same thing, India and Ethiopia, both ambiguous, vast regions of dark people in a vague terminology so it's for you it's open for you to surf the wave no one can tell you which ethiopia they're talking about because they have to first admit that it's an ambiguous term and that it's a greek term and you're just talking about a burnt face who's calling you burnt face you call each other burnt face come on Three Indias. The later concept became a standard one in the Middle Ages. Middle Ages wins that. That's the takeover. Right? They looking for Preston John between 1145 and 1645. Wins the Middle Ages. Wins the Dark Ages. When is history being, you know, pushed push back and dumped back 300 years? Dumped back 1100 years? Plus. Now, let's learn about the the three Indias, so we can make our dismount. One of the three Indias, quote unquote, faced Ethiopia, quote unquote. So we're talking about what you would consider the modern Ethiopia or Africa. All right, so one India faced Africa, all right, according to the pseudo Abdias. The second faced Persia. And the third occupied the ends of the earth between the ocean and the realm of darkness. Is that ambiguous? Is it vague? Or is it getting a little more clear? Then when we talk about the third India, you're talking about the ends of the earth. And I want you to put yourself into the mind of a hijack. And you tell me where is the ends of the earth to a hijack? Where's the ends of the earth to a hijack? Where did they just come? Where did they just, they just came in California in the 1700s. They just got to Cali in the 1700s, man. They fought their way. We, 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 we fought them back, pushed them back all them hundreds of years. They just got to California in the 1700s, man. Where's the ends of the earth to the hijack? One of the Indias faced Ethiopia today Ethiopia the second India faced Persia and the third India occupies the ends of the earth between the ocean and the realm of darkness they're calling it remember their darkness is not your darkness my naka. their darkness is your light flip it the realm of light the third became especially fruitful for the geographical imagination. The third India, America, became especially fruitful for the geographical imagination. Where else are they using all their imagination to discover this America? Cities of gold. So the third India, America, became fruitful. 
especially fruitful for the geographical imagination. The region of untold islands, Indies, islands, Indies, islands, Caribbean, islands, South America, islands, North America, islands, 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 islands. How many islands are there on your side of town? I'll wait. Is it the region of untold islands? Are you in the region of untold islands? Do you even know all the islands around you? I'm in Cali and there's islands around me I don't even know about. Untold islands. The third India, the third became especially fruitful for the geographical imagination. The region of untold islands in which the plural term, quote unquote, India's, in which the plural India's etymologically is one and the same as Indies. So India's is Indies. Columbus got lost looking for the Columbus got lost looking for India. Columbus is looking for the Indies. Columbus was in the Indies looking for the Indies. He's looking for the what? Furthest India. Furthest India. Furthest India. The plural Indias, etymologically one and the same as Indies, came to rest for once and for all. There also were less mysterious, more valid definitions definitions of the, of the three Indias. Prester John, emperor of the three Indias. King David, emperor of all three Indias. That's the entire world, man. Among medieval ge geographers. Geographers, but for most Europeans, even the learned ones, even the smart as your so called European, even the smart so called white man, the term covered a vast and distant region of dark skinned people. Even for the learned scholarly so called European, the term India or Ethiopia covered a Vast and distant region of dark-skinned people culminating in a countless array of islands in one direction and in their modern Ethiopia in the other direction. So in one direction, there's untold islands or a countless array of islands. Again, the term India covered a vast and distant region of dark-skinned people culminating in a countless array of islands in one direction which is where you are today my nigga my naga my negro and the other direction is their africa right so there's a countless array of islands these are the indias from here to their africa over there which is why president john has a memorial right there in south africa because you're just talking about the indias and the indias cover a vast and distant region of dark copper colored people culminating in a countless array hoa a countless array hoa a countless array of islands in one direction and your modern ethiopia in the other direction and again these are three indias one face your so-called africa today the other faces persia and the third India became especially fruitful for the geographical imagination. Hawa. The region of untold islands in which the plural Indias etymo etymologically one and the same as Indies came to rest for one and one for all. The third India occupied the ends of the earth. America occupies to them the ends of the earth between the true ocean they called it the true ocean because they were stuck in the mediterranean sea they couldn't get to the true ocean they couldn't get out they were stuck in the mediterranean sea they can only travel from europe to africa across that little mediterranean sea that was their ocean until they found you my naga now they have a true ocean so the atlantic the pacific is all one ocean called the true ocean 
Look up the true ocean. You'll see it's all one thing. And you had it all. You had the entire ocean. They had the Mediterranean Sea, people. So that's why it's this fruitful imagination they're having of these untold islands in the ocean. They said this third occupied the ends of the earth between the ocean, between the true ocean and the realm of darkness or realm of light, depending on your perspective. And over here, we have the perspective of a dragonfly. Wah, wah. And again, we're just digging on the furthest India. And where did we get that, man? We had this. What link do we have? Uh, we're talking about this India. All right, so let's go back to the, the quest of a dragon and bird clan link that we were just in. And I'll just repeat about that Holy Grail drop. Remember the Holy Grail drop. All right, we're right on it. We're right on it. Right on time. Whatever the Holy Grail was, and the literature gives divergent views, all right, it was located somewhere in the farthest Indies or the farthest India. Again, this is out the book, Quest of the Dragon. We just got it out the book, Lost Tribes and Promised Lands, about the furthest India. All right, so now we got the farthest India, the third India, between the ocean, the true ocean, and the realm of darkness. Untold islands, right? Okay. Whatever the Holy Grail was, it was located somewhere in the farthest Indias or third Indias or Americas. So the Holy Grail's right here in the Americas. What is the Holy Grail? If the Garden of Eden was not enough surely the holy grail could lure the brave souls past the saracen armies to the mysterious east again they were trapped they couldn't get out the mediterranean sea so they needed something to lure the brave the brave soldiers right the brave christian warriors past the saracen armies because they couldn't get out so they had to fight their way past the Saracen armies to even check it out. Now you see why they needed some help. Now, all Saracens are not the same. Most of the time when they're calling people Saracens, they're just talking about any Moors, any of the Moors. But of course, we have divergent views of what this Moor business is all about. Moor means great, so we were called Moors. Matter of fact, even on the Rus. Uh, crest or the Andrews crest they say more but they call it they spell it m-o-r-e they don't spell it m-o-o-r what's the difference well more hey we know more right m-o-r-e i want some more water i want some more tea i want more gold i am more than you i am greater than you that's what a more is, M-O-R-E, more. But their more means Moab. Their more means Canaan. Their more means Amalek. Their more means Ammon. Their more means Esau. Their more means Confederacy, Psalms 83. Your more means you're greater than them. You have a greater lot, which is why they had to hijack you which is why they were searching for Preston John between 1145 and 1645. Which is why they're looking for the Holy Grail in the furthest Indies. Now, what is the Holy Grail? Let's get it from the other link I dropped in the chat room, man, right at the same time, man. This is off the Biblioteca play, play all right? And we're just talking again. You know, we dodge the hijack. We're trying to get this drop. So I'm just going to go all the way down to the bottom. We're just talking about the Holy Grail, man. <laughs> Hold on, man. Where's my... Make sure I pull all this up. So we got it. 
Oh man. Oh man. All right. Let's get it, man. I'm gonna get it from right here. Clearly, the foundation stone of the world is the same as what they're calling the black or hidden sun in the center of the earth, okay? All right, Dr. Hijack, focus, focus. Or the grail stone, all right? So we're talking about the foundation stone or the grail stone. Let's see what we can take from this. We're only talking about Preston John. The grail stone, which is said to be hidden in that location the grail romances provide us with much insight into the king of the world he is represented in the story by one of the supporting characters prester john just getting the babies out just getting the babies out so clearly this foundation stone or the grail stone or holy grail, <laughs> the grail romances provide us with much insight into the king of the world. He is represented by Prester John, a king who is mentioned in passing as ruling over a spiritual domain in the far away east. Ain't the grail located in the furthest India in the furthest east, right? You're in the east, flip the map. And who quite fittingly is said to come from Davidic descent. This is another substantiating source saying that priest king has something to do with King David. And this way they say that he quite fittingly is said to come from Davidic descent. The foundation stone, the grail stone, the scepter would never leave David, right? The dignity of a sacred king. Actually, let me back it up. Let me back it up. All right. So Evola continues. The Tactatus, they call it Tractatus, referred to him as king of kings, right? We're talking about the Emperor Hawa, Emperor of the Abyssinians, the Three Indias, Prince the John, Priest King, King of Kings. Emperor means King of Kings. Negush, Naga, Negush, Naga. He combined spiritual authority with regal power. Listen up. He combined spiritual authority, the law. With his regal power, he had it in, he had it in line, Hawa. Yet, essentially, Prester John is only a title, remember that, priest king, and a name, which designates not a given individual, but rather a function. A function. So when you're looking for Prester John, you're looking for someone who's fitting this function what is a mashiach what is a messenger they fit a function it's not one person named messenger right oh that's the messenger his name is messenger there are many messengers right depending on what their function is from hawa our secure breath our breath of security what is the function what is the breath Prester John is only a title and a name which designates not a given individual, but rather a function. Thus, Wolfram von Eschenbach. And I have this PDF. We're going to drop it in the library. Maybe we'll get some tomorrow, man. Maybe we'll get some tomorrow, man. Y'all still out there, man? We still surfing the wave, man? We still digging on this, man? Still all right to you, man? You still surfing the wave, man? Let go. I'm almost, I'm almost out of here, man. We making our dismount. We just getting it all in, man. We, we packing a lot into this four-hour show every night. Four hours a night, 20 hours a week, 80 hours a month. Let go. Turn up. We pack a lot into our investigation, man. 
I see you in the chat room. Much of hi to the family. Still surfing the wave in the chat room. Some of them is like 4 or 5 in the morning, man. I really appreciate that. And again, you know what I'm saying? All praise the most high. I pray you get a, I pray you get a restful sleep. I, I pray that two, 2 or 3 hours feels like 8 hours to you. You know what I'm saying? You know, whatever you sacrifice like this, man. I really appreciate y'all for manifesting our energy here. So this Wolfram von Etchenberg and the and in the Tetoro. So there's two all right, so Wolf Wolfram von Etchenberg is an author. All right? He he wrote this book and Preston John is all in it, but he's being put under different titles in this book. And this is now we can dig on a whole new title, a whole new character. That has a lot of Preston John drop. All right. And we're going to get that, you know, for the most part next time. I'm just giving you a teaser into what we're going to dig on tomorrow. All right. So this Wolfram von Etchenberg, Etchenbach, and in the Tutoro, Tutoro, all right, we find Preston John as a title, The Grail. The Grail. So they also are calling Prester John, Priest King, the Grail. So when you look at Indiana Jones and they're looking for the Holy Grail, just remember that there's a memorial set up in 18, 1986 by the Portuguese ambassador. When they're looking for the Grail, right, the Crusades, they're looking for the Grail. The Portuguese seafarers. Search for Prester John between 1145 and 1645. They're looking for the Grail on record for 500 years. And the Grail is the last noble image of the Negro, Naga. Copper color race found in America. Prester John is a title, so I'm not saying that this particular man is the grail. I'm saying the title, the, the designation, the mission, you know what I'm saying? What does it say? Prester John as a title. Let's go back. A king was mentioned in passing as ruling over a spiritual domain in a faraway east. The Grail Stone, which is said to be hidden in that location. We're talking the king of the world. It is only fitting he is from a Davidic descent. Preston John is a title designating not a given individual, but rather a function. So they're looking for the function. You have to get this in the highest octave possible as we make our dismount, my people. Much a hob, drop nation. Much a hob, drop nation. Much a hob. Thabawa, hala, hawa. Drop nation. We still here, baby. We still here, baby. And I need you to surf this wave one time with me, drop nation. When we talk about this holy grail, man. Enough of the mushy stuff. Let's get it. Dismount season. Preston John is only a title. It has to deal with a function. Whoever's carrying the function, the message is the function. The vibration is the function. The vibration is the law. And the law is the function. Preston John. The Grail function, as we will see, indicates from time to time the person who must become Prester John. Prester John, the Grail, Prester John, the Holy Grail, Prester John. The Grail Stone, the Foundation Stone, Priest King, the Grail, Priest King, the Function. Indicates from time to time the person who must become Prester John. 
the person who must become this vibration, must become this function. Moreover, in the legend, Prester John designates one who keeps in check the people of Gog and Magog. Damn, I can't make this up. What a dismount. What a dismount. Moreover, in the legend, Prester John, priest king, designates one who keeps in check the people of Gog and Magog, who exercises a visible and invisible dominion. What what Miss D in the copper color waking breaking down with the multi universe, man? Priest King designates one who keeps the hijack in check and exercises or has a functionality with a visible and invisible dominion. What is a dragon body? Figuratively, dominion over both natural and invisible beings. And who defends the access of his kingdom with lions and giants and dragons, right? I can't make it up, man. So Prester John, or rather the individual that must fulfill the function of the grail, what they're calling the Holy Grail or the Grail Stone, indicates from time to time the person who must become a wah, must become Prester John. Moreover, in the legend, Prester John designates one who keeps in check the people of Gog and Magog, the hi Hijack 101. The Confederacy, Psalms 83, who exercises a visible and invisible dominion, figuratively dominion over both natural and invisible beings, and who defends the access, wow, who defends the access of his kingdom with quote unquote lions and giants. And they put it in quotation marks, lions and giants, because they really talking dragons. They really talking dragons. In this kingdom is also found the fountain of youth. In this kingdom, Prester John, priest king, is also found the fountain of youth. The dignity, the dignity of a sacred king is often accompanied by biblical reminiscences, reminiscences by presenting Prester John as the son or nephew of King David and sometimes as King David him. Self. The dignity of a sacred king is often accompanied by biblical reminiscence by presenting Prester John as the son or nephew of King. David. And sometimes as King David himself. And there's much more, man. There's much more to dig on. But you know what I'm saying? It is dismount season. It is redemption season. And this is Drop Nation. Aha. I said a hop to the tribe, man. Set a hop to tie battle for that beautiful poem, my sister, my sister. I set a hop to all the wave surfers across the plain, digging on this in real time, losing sleep, man, losing sleep. And just keep that a hop going for your breath of security, ha huh? wow. Oh, it feels so good, man. I mean, don't you feel like an alien sometimes, you know? You feel so foreign because they, you know, put you in a whole myth category. So when you dig on yourself, you feel like an E.T. You feel like an alien. Like I don't belong. <laughs> Love the B.O.B., man. Let's vibe out, man. I'm still here chilling with y'all. Let's vibe out, man. E.T., alien. Let go, man. I'm with y'all. Let's rock. Rest hey, man, this is what Hawaii feel like, man. My bro Homicide in the chat room, man, Eyes of a Dragon said, man, this, 
this 5 a.m. business. It's 5 a.m., man. It's 5 a.m. with my bros at, man. He said, this is nothing, man. This ain't nothing, man. This ain't nothing, man. The wave is stronger than time. The wave is stronger than time. That's all I got to say about this, man. That's all I got to say about that. Much a hi to everyone surfing in the chat room tonight, man. KB, the family KB. Family Homicide, man. Aki, Armani, Gai, Isaac Ford, man. Surfing the wave tonight, man. Love to Sister Ty, Miss D in the Copper Color Awakening. Sister Larissa, man. Man, we just had a great time surfing the wave in real time, man. And we couldn't do it at all without that aha, man. It's all about the frequency. It's all about the frequency. It's all about the frequency. Vibe out, man. I'm here for y'all. You here for me. We rock this together, man. It's all about that frequency, man. Let's vibe up. Let's continue to tribe up. Stay up. Suit up. Choose up. Drop nation. And I, in, all, in all due respect to every race, niggas know black people don't crack. Like yeah, black, yeah, don't yeah, crack. black don't crack. Yeah, black don't crack. It rhymes. Yeah, what's it inconsistent? Well, indigenous don't crack. Indigenous the natives don't, don't crack. The natives don't. You can crack. see a native, and he could be ninety years old and still look like he's fifty. Mm. I'm talking for the natives. Yeah, I like when when it, com- when it comes to uh, talking about African Americans, I have no education with that. Period. Mm-hmm. I don't. I, I, I don't. I'm not even connecting to that no more because that's a system. Mm-hmm. That's like connecting. Say, hey, he's a bad guy. You don't hang with him. Oh, hey, I'm mm-hmm. gonna find out for myself. Mm-hmm. I'm not African American at all. My, hmm. my folks is not from Africa, and a lot of people in this room, folks, ain't from Africa. Might be a couple, but people just don't understand. I ask my grandma, like, yo, grandma, what's your background? She like, red foot and um, black tail Indian. But what? Yeah, my mother and my father, they, we are hundred percent Indians. Ask my other grandma, we got Cherokee in us, and European, and Italian, and a little Dominican. Huh? It's crazy. I'm like, what the fuck? That's why I'm like, well, Africa. Y'all, y'all look at me funny, like, nigga, I'm African. Like, I'm, I'm, you're not though. Like, you're you're, you're not. Eighty percent of uh, slaves was already here. It was natives. It's crazy. Hey, deep, where you get that number from? Right. Shit, I just checked the books. Which book? Yeah. My, I got a whole laptop full of this shit. Yeah. Yeah, just for me reading. It's not a solid book. Like, hey, uh-huh. there's only a thousand slaves came here. And- nah, nigga, no. you gotta read. You have to literally read, like. I'm so deep into it. I don't think about a slave ship. I think about what was a slave ship called? Jesus. What the fuck was a slave ship called that Christopher Columbus was on? Who funded that slave ship? Who paid for that boat? Mm-hmm. Like, what was these folks' race? Like, what, what was their background? Yeah, Mike, you, you, you want to come? You want to come? So, Michael, that's interesting. Cause, uh, why? Th- I'm just, it's like a why. It's not like I'm chastising. Yeah. It's like, why? Mm-hmm. No, but it's interesting because a lot, when it comes to you're addressing identity, right? So, so you're I, familiar with that boat, right? I'm... Uh, I'm not familiar with the boat exact that you're referencing, but I am the slave boat, the first slave boat. Oh that yeah, came the slave boat. Yeah, for I sure. Said, who for paid sure. for the slave boat? Um, that was from the the Europeans in terms of well, well, the, the what colonization. Was ethnicity? What was their ethnicity? Uh, there was Germans. There was no. Individuals what was their ethnicity that paid for that boat? That that <laughs> that built that boat and that voiced that boat. And who, who are the people directions? who built the boat or who paid for the boat to be built? It's in the books. It's just no. it's in the books. I'm not going to say shit because we got we got to specify which boat. Yeah, and from the which boat part of the cup. Columbus was on. The boat that y'all celebrated well, let's look it Columbus up. Day. Wasn't it's called, that the Jesus, it's called Jesus, Jesus of Lubeck. For, yeah, and who who the Spain the Spanish King Henry. But we gonna get to it. I don't worry, okay. we gonna get to it like that. Like, trust me, it's deep. It's okay. deep, bro. But it's the deep. question I have for you in regards to identity, then um, some uh, blacks don't want to be called African Americans. Uh, some report to call as black. So with you saying you're not African American, you're more of the indigenous. Your grandmother and your grandparents from the Native American tribes. Do you address yourself as Native American? Do you address yourself as black? Do you address yourself as African American? I'm other. So you're other. I'm un- I'm uneducated. I'm uneducated. So for me to sit here like a college professor, or a professor, I'm wrong. I'm uh-huh. uneducated. I'm confused. You know what I'm saying? But I'm damn sure not black. You're not gonna call me black. My my, own, my grandmother's not Crayola. Like, so no, then, no, I'm connected to a tribe. I'm from a tribe, not a country. Mm-hmm. It's a big hmm. difference. What? Different laws, different everything. Like big difference.